happening at the Aramco Half Marathon and the elites are out, John, and what goes through your mind as you get past that starting line? Uh, trying not to go too fast. They're so fit. Like you take uh, like uh, 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 Kill Kelly, the, the, the favorite in this race, he, he could go off and run a 4.10 mile, 4.15 mile by mistake. I mean, they, they've got to slow themselves down to the paces they're trying to hit, which is still very, very fast, but you can't go out too fast in the first mile. For the regular runners, the advice is often, if you come through the first mile too fast, stop. Actually stop, walk for a few seconds and get going. And don't, get, don't get too caught up in thinking you're feeling great. Yeah, yeah. The normal rule for a marathon is the halfway point is 20 miles. You okay. cannot get excited till 20 miles. If you're a risky runner, you make a big move at 17 or 18. I could so, see the adrenaline would kick in though oh, sometime. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a very exciting. And you see how they're, they're, the pinch point where they're squeezing them down? Mm -hmm. What that allows for, even though it's frustrating, it looks like it's frustrating, it's not. It allows everyone to hit the starting line running. So they don't, they don't do a walking period or, or they're forced mm -hmm. to slow down. The pinch points before they start racing, otherwise they'd be pinch points during the race. And everyone's time starts right there electronically at the starting line. Right. You'll, you'll, at the end of the race, you'll get a gun time and you'll get a chip time. The chip time is a, it's on your bib. And uh, you'll see the gun time and chip time might be 45 or 50 minutes off for the final finishers. It'll take 50, 55 minutes to get everyone through the start line. And it's a long, long process, but this is really the way to do it, as you say, funnel people to the starting line. Right, because they, they can go to a gigantic race and still get to run the entire way. We, yeah, do have a, we do have a guy, and we're going to bring him up here, Callum Neff, who is the last man running, or last runner starting, I should say, <laughs> um, because he's going to go at the back of the crowd, and then he gets up to the starting line, maybe 40 to 50 minutes. I think 55 minutes. 55 minutes, and he's going to try and pass as many people as he can, and for every person he passes, they make donations to the charities. Yes, he's doing the half marathon, so he'll, 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 he'll still reach us while we're still on air. Yeah, this, this event isn't just about the elite runners coming to town, getting a chance to uh, perhaps qualify for the Olympics, Correct. and we'll talk more about that, but it's also about raising money locally for so many of our nonprofits, and the Run for a Reason program has, has given us a chance to touch so many nonprofits in this community. People dedicate their running, their training, to a cause that they believe in, and uh, you'll see a lot of these nonprofits along the route, particularly at the beginning, holding up their signs. And there's 60 or 70 of them. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge list that, that really benefit from this race. I think they say $30 million yeah, donated so, so far, far has years. been raised because of that program. So so it's th this event really touches people who are the most elite in the sport and regular folks who want to run for their own personal development and then people who don't run at all, <laughs> but get a chance to be touched by this event being in our community. As you can line up as a, as a regular person, you get to line up with the best in the world. Just think if you got to do that with J.J. Watt. With, I'm, I was thinking I'm playing with LeBron. <laughs> LeBron and I are out there together. <laughs> he might dunk on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's a very cool you know, opportunity. 22,000 people run every year. It's pretty much an even split between the marathon and the half marathon. Not everybody makes it to the finish line. There are a lot more people, obviously, yeah. that drop out of the marathon. But since 1972, 186,000 people have crossed the finish line in the marathon and 156 in the half marathon in the last 18 years. So we got a pretty good finishing record here in Houston. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the course itself and the weather, you look down that list that they have in that book, the weather has been very good here. There's very few years that have been super hot, which is unusual for Houston. We think it's going to be bad, but they've gotten really lucky with this marathon. Yeah. And actually, in excess of 27,000 people registered. It's saying it right there. Courtney just put that up. Uh, by the way, you feel free to share your thoughts with us using the hashtag HOU Marathon, and we'll be happy to share some of your uh, tweets and social media yeah. comments uh, uh, during our broadcast. But uh, 27,000 people registered. All I guess don't make it is what happens. That, that, that also includes the 5K. Okay. They do a 5K Yesterday's yesterday. 5K. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. I right. think David Nuno was down there at the uh, starting line for us. David? Hey. Hey, Gina. Watching these guys right before they started, uh, seeing their warm-up has me reevaluating my entire style when it comes to running. They really get after it. As you can see right now, they're off and running. Not as many layers being thrown on the ground as we've seen in years past. I think they want to stay a little warm for a little bit, but they are off and they are going. One theme you can always guarantee here at the, at the start line is a bunch of smiles and people just excited to get started. Everyone's looking over at our cameras, having a great time running out here. They begin their race strategy. It all starts right here, obviously, at the start, and they go for 26.2 or 13.1. Let's go back to you guys in the studio. 
All right, David, thank you. The prize total this year, about uh, 191, oh, excuse me, $281,000 is the top prize money this year overall, collectively. It is now given to the top eight finishers in each race. In the past, it has been the top seven finishers. The number one runner in the marathon wins $45,000. The winner of the half marathon, 20 grand, John. A lot of money, but not compared to some other races around the world. Right, but it, there's also more money involved because they, they run certain time bonuses, and everybody gets that time bonus. Like the extreme would be in the marathon, if you set the course record, they double it. You get $45,000, and then you also, on top of it, get another $20,000 for running under 207.30. And they have those time bonuses go down quite a ways. So even if you're, you could get good money and not be in the top eight. Mm -hmm. That's happened in the past as well, where they give time bonuses like that. It's a uh, it's prize money comparison. To Boston gives a lot more. Tokyo gives a lot more. Uh, I, interestingly, London does not. It gives like $5,000 more to the winner, but they give a, a gajillion dollars in, in appearance money. You get people, the best in the world, that get two, three, four hundred thousand dollars just to start. To show up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and let's go back and talk, I mentioned it earlier, but ab about the Olympic qualifying opportunity that these runners have today. I know that's a big big deal for us here today. There's runners doing, there's two things going on today. There's runners from other countries trying to hit the Olympic standard, which is 211.30 for the wem for the men and 229.30 for the women. There's a few doing that. There are dozens trying to hit the Olympic trials qualifying standards. Those are for the women, in the, in the for the U.S. only Olympic trials. The Olympic trials are, are uh, uh, February 29th in Atlanta. This is the last day you can qualify um, if, of anywhere else in the world. This is it. This is the last race. And it's, you can qualify in the half marathon or the marathon. For the women, it's 73 minutes in the half marathon or 245 for the B standard. For the, and there's a 237 standard for the A. The only difference between A and B is who's paying your way. Okay. And then in the men, it's at 64 minutes for the half marathon, and it's uh, 219 for the B, 215 for the A. There's we, this, they have an athlete, athlete, athlete development program here where they're bringing in dozens and dozens of people, which is this is just a they great program. They mean the Houston Marathon. The Houston Marathon. Okay. And in this thing, you don't get like a free hotel room or anything like that, but you get a free entry and a place to warm up on the starting line. You get a clean start. That doesn't sound like it's a big deal, but the difference from being stuck in the in the, in the masses, which is uh, wonderful people and everything, <laughs> and being able to stride out and go is a huge difference. It gives yeah. those guys a chance to make the, the Olympic trials. So, right. so we might see how many people, do you think? I mean, in the past years, how many people might we see you, in the Make last the year, it was probably six or seven, mm -hmm. but this year there could be 15, 20. Brant okay. Cox, the race director, thinks it could be a stream of guys coming to do 218 and 219. Okay. They've got special rabbits for those for those uh, folks to try to make it. Exciting. Now, most of the runners, the top 10 runners in this year's marathon, are either from Ethiopia or Bahrain, and the, the same as. I, mean, I think all top 10 runners, I'm talking of the people that have entered with the fastest times in the women's marathon are also from Ethiopia. In the half, it's a lot different. It's Kenyans who are leading the pack in terms of times, both in the men's and the women's half marathon. Right, the, the, the fastest is from in the men's half. It's for, uh, uh, Jamal Yimmer is actually from Ethiopia as well. He's got a 58.33. He's got the fourth fastest time ever run. They, they, those, that's, starting with that race, that's the race that, that they've got a seven, eight guys that have run under the course record in their lives, and Yimmer's way under that. Last year, he'd done it as well. He'd run 58-33 last year, but he got second. Right. I was going to say he's got a grudge match against Kata uh, <laughs> Shura, Shura Katata, Kataki, yeah. who won it last year. Right. And the time, even though he did, we said, oh, he didn't get the course record, it was the fastest time running the United States last year, 60-11. Wow. wow. It was the fastest legal time running the United States. We're looking right now at the, oh, well, we just switched shots. That's the male full right now that we're looking at? No, no, this is the half. Oh, that's the... Yeah, this is... Okay. Uh, up, up, up on the screen now is Jared Ward. These are the... I think this is... There's two packs going on. Um, because this looks like an American pack, and this looks like the non-American pack. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, because none of the American... Oh, there I see. Look, there's yeah. is that the same group behind? No, it's a different group. Okay. The, I think that's the marathon people hanging on to the half marathon. Half marathon people. Yeah, it, it, one of the tricks is this This race is so fast in the half that that 62 minutes, is. it's hard to describe how good that is for a half marathon. And th they might lose by three minutes today. I mean, by, th by over half a mile running a great mark that's like going to be a top 10 American mark for the year. You know, some of these guys look like they're so relaxed, and then other people look like they're struggling already. But that's oh yeah, just the, the running style. comparison of these two, right. yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, this is the marathon people that's right marathon now, and they're just, they're just right behind the, the, uh, half the half people. Let me talk a little bit about the evolution of speed, because back in the first modern Olympics, 1896, the race was run in 258. 
the winner set that time of 2.58. The women's was in 1926 in London, one of the first, very first women's full marathons in London. The woman won it in 3.40. Now you've got a world record at 2.01.37. Actually, somebody's broken the two-hour mark, but that was sort That's of on a different funny, track. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but so we'll go by 2.01.37. So you've shaved an hour off the running times in the last 100 years or so. Well, in, in 100 years ago, 115 years ago, they didn't train. And they didn't have the shoes, yeah, the they technology. Didn't have shoes at all. Oh, yeah. And, and, even, and even like you jump ahead 60, 70 years, like in the 50s, they were training like today. They're doing 100, 120 miles a week on really bad shoes. With They didn't have Memorial Park and the soft surfaces. They're running on just on concrete with cars. So they were injured a lot. Mm -hmm. Al Lawrence used to be a coach here in town, got the 56 uh, bronze medal in the 10K. And he said once that I wasn't the, the fittest, the third fittest 10K runner in the world when I got that medal. I was the third fittest healthy runner in the world when I got mm -hmm. that medal. Because you just pushed the limit and got hurt. The, the shoes, the running surfaces, and even and the, re and the uh, uh, um, techniques to, to rehab are way better. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're unimaginable 150, 120 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, we yeah, 100 years is a long time. It <laughs> is a long time. It is a long time. The oldest runner in the marathon today, 83 years old. The oldest in the half is 89 okay, years you old. you got to slow down on that, Tom. I know. 83 Three years, years old. old running a marathon. And his knees can his still knees take it. His knees are still holding up. Yep. Um, the oldest female at marathon are 77, 77. years young. <laughs> Right. And uh, the youngest, uh, a pair, a brother and sister, oldest, uh, youngest marathoners are 12 years old today. Yeah, le the Labrado uh, brother and sisters from El Paso, they're both um, 12 years old. She is 11 months older than he is. They're not twins. And it brings up how young is too young to start training. There's not a lot of research on what running does to younger bodies in terms of joints and all that. Some doctors say, you know, the, the body plates move a little bit if you train too much as a younger person, your body's still growing, still developing. But not a lot of research long term on what happens with kids. Of course, you know, for the cardiovascular system and all, all of that, it's great. But what happens to your young knees and joints at that age? The, the irony is that, that we found that uh, it's not really the distance running that's a problem. It's the intensity. Hmm. And so the, if you, like in a junior high age, 12, 13, 14, if you're doing a lot of repeat miles and repeat 400s, you're running really hard, that causes more problems, stagnates your ability to develop than the mileage does. Okay. Most people freak out by hearing, oh, they're doing 30 or 40 miles so a week. So they should run slower. They should, it should, it's an easier, more tempo, more aerobic until your body finishes growing or gets, it starts slowing down and growing. Okay. Yeah. And in the half marathon, you've got a seven and an eight year old running. Those yeah. are the youngest yeah. in the half marathon. Yeah. My, my, the, the half, I, my initial reaction at 12 years old is too young. Mm -hmm. But then you, then you look at another side of some of these athletes, are, that we have a very young field today. Some of the, the elite runners are 21, 22, 23. And they've been doing marathons for years. Yeah. So yeah. I don't. So 12 is too young, but 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 what's not? So yeah. maybe 12 isn't too young. If you start getting ready at 16 and race at 17, right. 18. Right. And let's ask the 83-year-old who's running the marathon. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd be very old? curious to know when the when the 83-year-old wow. started uh, wow. running to, to right. run marathons at 83 still. There's also yeah. two gentlemen in this field that are trying to run a sub three-hour marathon for their sixth sixth decade. Wow. They've run a sub three in the se wow. 70s, 80s, 90s, aughts, teens, and now the 20s. Wow. And you have 544 legacy runners in this marathon today. That's people who have run 10 or more Houston marathons. So you really have a devoted crowd in this field of runners today. 544 legacy runners. Right. The, I think the longest is run, uh, Jack Lippicott's run all of them. I think so. I think he's on his, whatever he is, it's the 44th time he's yeah. done it. 48th marathon. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's, I mean, people like coming back to this event because the, the city and Chevron do such a great job, uh, Ramco, in hosting everyone like they really are special. Oh, we talk about this every year. The George R. Brown Convention Center is the key. Mm -hmm. If you go to Boston, you go to New York, they're going to have an Elite 10, an Elite room for the for just right. the elites. And, and everybody gets that exact. I went to Boston one year. They put you in the gym. Uh -huh. But this is nicer than the gym that they, that they put the Boston runners in, the very best in the world. That's all they have is a gym next to the starting line. All the, all the non-elites sit outside. The, if it's rainy, it's cold. You're stuck in the rain. Oh. It's cold. They have some tents, but it gets muddy, and it gets, it's hard. And you're yeah. out there for hours. It's hard to keep your muscles Oh, oh it's hard warm. to make it a great yeah. experience. This is a great experience no matter what. You can stay in there until you're ready to get out. And then, then they feed everybody. They got do breakfast. All, they do all these small things, but the major. <laughs> thing is they really take care of the athletes. Yeah. They treat everyone as if they're a true athlete. And you are still watching most of the runners get start. to the starting line. <laughs> right. Start. People are still starting.
starting. Yep, we're seeing those groups being funneled up This is not old tape. No, this is not, as a matter of fact. Still people. Well, when you got 22,000 plus runners trying to get to the starting line, it does take a while. And then you've got Callum Neff, the last runner starting way at the back of that pack. And he's actually going to run and then join us hip here on the set to give us his you know take it, on what it, that's like. It seems like. to me that the deeper you go, the more clothes I see on them. Like the elite runners didn't have extra stuff to shed and a lot of these uh, more neophyte runners right. seem to, to me to have more leggings and jackets yeah. and hats. And <laughs> they'll probably lose those <laughs> eventually. Yeah. yeah. When do these guys finally warm up? After the first mile? Oh, no, they do a full warm up. You'll do, they'll do, they'll run two or three miles prior to this. So that's why oh. you said they were sweating. Yeah, yeah, they're doing oh. a full warm up and they're doing full stride. Yeah, these guys, uh, it's actually the rule I like to explain to folks is you, you need to be, how, whatever your first mile is going to be, say you're doing repeat miles at that, you need to be warmed up to handle that and make it be really easy. Well, they went out, they, like for the half marathoners, they went out in 435 for the mile. So do you, you can't just hop out of bed and run at 435 and make it be comfortable. Yeah. But also the distance isn't the key, even for the marathoners. They know they can run 26 miles. So where do they do that run up? That uh, warm up mile. All over the. Okay. Yeah, they're just I mean, we've been around here downtown this morning and I hadn't noticed. <laughs> yeah, they'll go to the starting area. They, oh, they, they, they okay. bus them over there and then they warm up through the downtown streets. Okay. All right, we're going to take you to mile four, the River Oak Shopping Center, and our man on the street, Ted Ober. Good morning to you, Ted. Yeah, hey, good morning, Tom and Gina. It is a chilly spot here in River Oaks as we start to see the elite runners come down here past the four-mile mark. Uh, they're running a great clip. They're still a bit in the distance behind this first set of uh, police cars here, but out on the, uh, the streets already, there are plenty of the of spectators here. Who are you guys waiting for? Uh, Alan. Alan, I'm, is Alan in the first pack here? Alan's maybe still not started yet. I don't think he, he, may, he might have started already. Uh, I hope so, but it's cold this morning, huh? Yeah, it's really cold. And you know what? For the runners, guys, it's going to be cold. I don't know if the elites will, but I would imagine all sorts of our friends will have gloves on. Their hands are really chilly. Uh, and it's just waiting for these runners to, to come. That, those are the lights you can see way in the distance. What we've seen so far are a lot of the wheelchair competitors coming through uh, to start this race. But now we'll start to see uh, more, more of the runners, more of the people that could win this race. Uh, as you talked about early on, uh, the, the weather for the runners is fantastic. Uh, and the wind, it picks up from time to time, but it is not a steady wind. And it's not in their face as they come down West Gray here. Uh, and likely would not have been in their face as they were coming out of downtown uh, on Washington. Uh, it is a, a, a great morning now. The sun is up. And this, by the way, guys, through River Oaks is a great spot to watch. You have plenty of time to come down here if you're close uh, in this neighborhood. It is a, one of my favorite mornings in all of Houston to see uh, this city sort of put it on. Uh, and it's a great way uh, to, to cheer on your neighbors who certainly could use a little bit of the support. Oh, yeah. Maybe not yeah. here, but certainly later on. Go ahead, is Tom. There a, is there a band behind you, Ted, or a drum corps? <laughs> uh, it, well, it's what I travel with, Tom. Uh, it's the Warren <laughs> Branch drum line. That's the uh, way you roll, huh, Over? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's a big morning for all of us here. Oh, uh, this is yeah, cool. Yeah, this is how they keep warm. But, oh, here, look at this. It is so fun to watch these elite runners go by. If they sweat, they don't show it, but they're also not smiling. If I could <laughs> run like that, I wouldn't stop smiling. I mean, that is awesome. It is so cool yeah. to watch them. Uh, and then yeah. behind them, David, is the second pack. I believe this is what you uh, you guys thought was might be the second pack or maybe the full marathon pack coming behind them. Very tightly bunched. Uh, both, both packs at this point running past us at the four-mile mark. Uh, it's fantastic. Way to go, guys. Looking good. Man. You know, it looks like they're jogging, but when you're up close, Ted, no, they're, they're running. They are sprinting. I don't drive that fast in my commute <laughs> to work. I mean, they, the, and it's effortless. It is so much fun to watch them because it just, when I run, it looks like it's about to be my first step or my last step of my life. Uh, but these guys, they just, it, it's just effortless. It's just step after step and turnover is incredible. They just do it. It's fun to see. 
It is. And for those of you sitting at home and you want to go out and watch the race, go ahead and do it. If it's close to you and you can get there, because these runners really do appreciate all the cheers and all the sideline hoopla. A lot of the elite runners told us that's what helps them get to the finish line. And I'm like, Tom, it doesn't look like a jog to me. It looks like yeah. full throttle. Well, <laughs> jogging is the word I should never use with these guys. <laughs> no, they are it looks fast. It yeah. looks fast. They are flying. They're I mean, flying right high. now, the paces they're on, and they won't hold this, but the marathon pace is sub 204. Yeah, you see some oh. of the tweets. <laughs> sub 204. <laughs> yeah. They're under, uh, under they're on race pace. Uh, oh, really? Cor course record pace for the wow. for the half. And the and the women's marathon pace, they're on like 221 pace right now. They, this is early. I mean, the, the, the rabbits may be excited, but this is, they're not, they're not leaving it out there. I mean, yeah. uh, they're, they're not going to, they're trying right now. They're flying. And at the bottom of your screen, you see some of the tweets people are sending out this morning. We hope you'll get involved as well. Tweet us at HOU Marathon. Use that hashtag, and we'll try and get some of your tweets on the air. And as uh, this person says, good luck to all our friends and colleagues running, and that's for sure. Tonight, 1035, it's our show, The Finish Line. We'll have your friends and neighbors and those people out there running, plus the elites on our wrap-up show at 1035 tonight. We hope you'll join us in because you can see your friends and neighbors. Yes, and we are trying to get a shot, too, of the uh, women of the female uh half marathon is oh, okay they just went by I'm, i apologize when uh, tom was talking oh there there we go yep. there they are at, at um ted oberg's location at the, uh, the River Oak Shopping Center. And I can't tell, John, is, are those the half marathoners or the full marathoners? Oh, they just went by again. So when you looked up, you saw, you saw them from behind. That may have been the half. I think they're the half. The half, okay, okay. But on well, the left. I, I want to also note that um, this marathon makes success, itself accessible to all kind of athletes. Today, we have uh, four marathoners in a wheelchair, four in the half marathon, hand cyclists, 20 hand cyclists in the marathon, three in the half marathon. We have a set of duos in the marathon, six in the half marathon, 13 marathoners who are visually impaired. And I have to mention that one of our coworkers, Justin Sternberg, is going to be guiding one of those runners. 27 are in the half marathon who are visually impaired, mobility impaired, four in the half, four in the full, and 89 guides for the marathon and the half marathon, making themselves available to make sure that these athletes are able to compete and today. That's really a cool thing to watch. And if we see them along the course, we'll point them out to you. These guides who take uh, the visually impaired or uh, or some of the people who are disabled through the course. In fact, for the visually impaired, they're telling them where to step next and you know, just helping them avoid the turns and all of that kind of thing and running into a curb or whatever else. But they keep them in the middle of the pack. I think the, the, the courage to be a blind runner is just Unbelievable, yeah. you're right. The yeah. trust you have to have in your guy. Right. Well, and the guy. training has to be difficult because you have to find someone to right. train alongside mm -hmm. you too all along. So you have to have a real commitment to want to fulfill this, this goal. Also today, Michael, Roger is in the race. Michael Roger is what they call T46 uh, Paralympic runner. He has he's, um, has an ampute arm amputee, arm, nothing right. below his arm. He's trying. He's already owns the world record, uh, a 222 for the, the T46 Paralympian. He's trying to be the first person to ever break 220. Based on his other marks, he can. I think 218, uh, 217 even is not out of the question for him. He's run great halves. He's run great mile, great 1500s. He's phenomenal. He's from, from Australia. So many great stories. Also a story of father and son going for the world record. UK runners Matt and Andrew Leach, right. Andrew Leach trying to break the world record. Fastest father and son. Their time combined is what is used. They're trying to beat 220 together. So just, and, uh, just a whole lot of opportunities and here. And, and that's possible. Uh, uh, Andrew Leach ran for University of San Francisco. He's really good. He's, he's run a 28-minute 10K, he's run a 13.35 5K, which are, translates to, uh, uh, you know, he can run 62 minutes, maybe better. So his dad only, only has to <laughs> run uh, like six, uh, 70, I can't remember now, 75 minutes. But his dad can do it. He ran 72 minutes two years ago. He's, his dad's 55. Uh -huh. I know how that feels, so we'll see. If I do, do too. It. But I'm I'm I, with <laughs> the, I think they have the a door. really good chance to get that record. Okay, I'm yeah. going to tell you that the female half marathon is on the left. You don't see a lot of the women in there because they're a bit shadowed by... They there this we go. group of I men who are there, but they I are there, and then yeah, uh, I see them. There, there we you go. go. There they are. That's the female one, leaders in the half woman. marathon. Yeah. Nia, uh, she's going for a 13-year-old Japanese record in the half marathon. 67-26 uh, is what she's trying to run today. That, and 
Um, is this her first time in this event? This is her, her first time in this okay, event. Yeah, she ran a, a she had run a half marathon in like eight years. She oh. ran it when she was really young. Has has banged out some excellent 10Ks over the years. She's a great track runner, and she's moving back to the roads. And this is where she's starting, trying to get that record. Does this work out where you draft people, get behind them, and try not to get in the breeze? Try oh, to stay is, out of this, the breeze. This is huge. If she could stay with this pack of guys, it's just going to be awesome <laughs> for her. You, you live for this. There's this the benefit of being the really? 5'1 woman, huh? Yeah, remember we were talking about how it, at that, the, the marathon time that broke two that didn't count? She's getting it here, and it counts. She can have that <laughs> same blockage the whole way. Uh, um, if, if she's the leader, and I believe she is, I don't know where the others are. Cause she, the, she's probably two minutes behind where uh, Chepkowicz can run. So I'm wondering if she's... Uh, if she's in the wrong, if, oh, I'm wondering where the others are at this yeah. point. That's what I was wondering. Well, we're going to search for them. We take are. Take a quick break. Or maybe <laughs> she's running even too fast for that. Yep. Yeah. We're just getting started. We got yeah. two and a half hours of live coverage left in the 48th running, the Chevron Houston Marathon. Back in a moment. Runners depend on the weather forecast because getting caught in the rain is no fun. That's why I depend on the ABC 13 Houston app for hour by hour weather forecasts. It's convenient, it helps me plan my day and my training. I'm not lacing up without checking it first. I, I think I'm as ready as I can be. I'm ready, but clearly I'm a little nervous. There are so many expectations, like on the sticker, city mileage this, highway that. That's a lot to live up to, but I heard no gas gets better mileage than Chevron with Techron. Yeah, no better mileage. It's proven, so that's a confidence builder. It's proven, no gas gets better mileage than Chevron with Techron. Care for your car. <laughs> so much for my new car smell, guys. We are Aramco Americas, creating business opportunities for our partners, developing technology and sustainability breakthroughs in our labs, searching for energy solutions, working alongside the community on things that matter. We are professionals and neighbors, working to make a difference. We're proud to sponsor the We Are Houston 5K and the Aramco Houston Half Marathon. You have to dig deep to find the motivation to change. Change is hard. Change takes time. Change demands sacrifice. ViewSport's sweat-activated technology was developed to motivate you to go that extra mile, to hustle harder, to visibly show your work so you can push further. Performance apparel designed to show the making of a champion. ViewSport. Motivation. Just get up and go. Just That's do it. it. Anything is possible. Sign up now. Sign up, Sign up now. now. 2021 Chevron Houston Marathon registration opens today at 4 p.m. You know what? It starts with one mile. Put one foot in front of the other. Register now to secure the lowest available price. Visit ChevronHoustonMarathon.com. Sign up, guys. I, I think I'm as ready as I can be. I'm ready, but clearly I'm a little nervous. There are so many expectations, like on the sticker, city mileage this, highway that. That's a lot to live up to, but I heard no gas gets better mileage than Chevron with Techron. Yeah, no better mileage. It's proven, so that's a confidence builder. It's proven, no gas gets better mileage than Chevron with Techron. Care for your car. <laughs> so much for my new car smell, guys. I first met Susie at the Fort Benfit Running Club, and we've been running together now for probably 20 years. Running a marathon is a big commitment, but Susie and Dave Comstock have gone the distance together in more ways than one. I was able to convince Susie to marry me at uh, mile 20 at Heartbreak Hill during the Boston Marathon. Two down two, man and wife. The couple has a long history with the world's most storied foot race. I've run nine Boston marathons. I have run 16 consecutive Boston marathons. This picture was taken probably about two minutes before the first bomb went off. For both of them, that includes 2013, the year tragedy struck Boston when two explosions blasted at the finish line. Just before coming up to the finish line, the first bomb goes off. People in the stands 
starts, uh, you know, screaming. Susie had agreed we were going to meet just past the finish line. She was directly across in between the, the first and second bomb. So when Susie came across, we just kind of embraced. But that wasn't the only challenge the couple faced that year. We had just gotten through the Boston bombing in August of 2013. She was diagnosed with breast cancer. After her diagnosis, um, she had her surgery in October. And remarkably, three months later, she ended up running the Houston Marathon. We ran that one together, and it was a very special one because it was her first marathon after, after breast cancer. <laughs> you ready for a run? This year, the couple will be lacing up together again. This will be my ninth Houston Marathon this year. I am running my 17th Houston Marathon, and overall, it'll be my 97th marathon. Everybody's out there cheering. The crowds are fabulous. We sometimes think that we're a little crazy because we run, but it's fun. Crossing that finish line is fantastic. And welcome back to our coverage of the Chevron Houston Marathon. You were just looking on the left-hand side of your screen. People are still getting started on the race this morning, but off to a quick start. Yes, and we have uh, Courtney Fisher, our reporter, at Kirby and Bissonette between miles six and seven, where some of those leaders are coming up. And there you see on the map. Good morning to you, Courtney. Good morning, Tom. We just saw the pack of elite runners pass us. Like Ted said, it is incredible to see them just flying in person. I got to show you right now a group of them coming up behind me. It is nothing like seeing them out here in person. So if you are near Kirby and Bissonette, we are welcoming this pack now. You have got to get out here and see this. Unbelievable. And so far, chilly but that sun is coming up it's making a huge difference we're seeing people come out with their signs their posters and guys this is my favorite group every year they're always at this spot these bolivian dancers look at this how do you not want to run this race and see these beautiful women who are so excited about to be out here with their masks and their dancing you guys are here every year right yes this is our fourth year here okay so tell me why you always want to come out yeah you know we, we're the group of fun folklorico cantuta in houston and we want to come out and support our runners they're up here before the crack of dawn and running and we want to show support and i think like ted said guys it really makes such a difference for these runners when they get cheered on they hear the music pumping it is huge for them right that's what brings you back every year yeah totally i mean when they're running and we just want to give a little bit of support that extra oomph for them so definitely awesome so you don't mind the cold so much it's a little no. chilly no it's always cold so we come prepared but I they're running so yeah, they're, they're the ones working hard. hard then you are dressed for the weather right they, yes definitely. <laughs> i love this so guys we again are at bissonette and kirby right now welcoming these marathoners as they make their way down. This is also an important corner because I don't know if you can see across the way, we've got a few of these booths set up and these are the charity booths, the run for a reason booths. We've got our own Chaz Miller who's running in the marathon, raising money for cystic fibrosis. Since 1995, $30 million has been raised for Houston charities. Guys, that is incredible. So we've got a lot going on in this corner. It is so exciting out here to be here and watch these guys run. We'll send it back to you. Tom I Dito. love it. All the hoopla along the route, Courtney. Thank you very much. Yeah, that run for a reason has been great over all these years. We do have a number of employees running. As Gina just ma uh, mentioned, one of our producers, Justin Sternberg, is one of the guides. We've got uh, reporter Jessica Willey, who is yes. running the half marathon today, and a couple of other people. She so Chaz we're going to be cheering them on all morning long. We're going to be looking for your relatives and friends as well. So that's mile six and seven you're looking at, but we want to go now to the split mile eight just before it. Pooja Lodia standing by live for us. They're right now. Pooja? Well, Gina, it is cold out here, but the spirit is definitely keeping warm. Take a look around us. We have just over the past, I would say, 10 minutes or so, started seeing people show up. A lot of them have cute signs. A lot of them are really here to cheer on their loved ones. So, yes, we are right now at the split. So this is the place where those doing the full and the half marathon split up. You
you can see a lot of people coming through right now and we are actually expecting to see even some elite runners coming through here now you do go i take it it's this way right it's this way actually if you're doing the full marathon and if you're doing the half marathon you go this way so of course a lot of these fans out here looking you know for a little bit of both i'm gonna actually cross the street because we can right now and i'm coming over to talk to y'all because all of you have your channel 13 signs we actually just gave them to them i didn't tell them they were going to be on tv though so sorry so i'm uh, sorry so who are you here for? Tell me. Jen Campa, she's a girlfriend that works with us. Pamela and I work together, and uh, she's our marketing guru. So we're excited to see her come by. That is wonderful. Why is this such a big deal? You think just so many people were coming this way to kind of get out of the way. Why do so many people come out here? Why are you here? Well, I think they cheer people on. People have worked so hard all year to reach their goal, and we want to be a part of it. Great. Fantastic. And you realize that y'all have to come over here. You're not doing this whole thing. We're not keeping you in the background. You got to explain to me who they are, what's so going on. Best cousins ever. This is Esther. It's her first half. And this is Matthew. It's his second full. That is wonderful. And do they know that you have signs with their faces on them? They do. They will. And take a look. You're looking at some of those elite runners. These are the ones who are doing the half marathon. Again, the full marathon. This is where things out here switch. But you can see, gosh, just how quickly they are going down there. I mean, I cannot even imagine how they're going to keep all of this up. How's this dog holding up? <laughs> the most beautiful I'm dog in the excited. world. It's just very exciting. <laughs> so tell us, sir, why you come out here. I see you got your coffee in there. I'm a little jealous. Well, I'm here with her. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So we, all, we, come, we live in the neighborhood, so we come out every year. It really is inspiring to see these runners here, right? I mean, just take a look. And again, I know we've been talking about this all morning, just how good the weather out here is. It is cold out here, but gosh, look at this. I mean, he is focused. He is going, not letting any of this distract him. But of course, we are seeing a lot of people out here with signs, really cheering everybody on. Let's, let's, let's keep walking. Let's go on a little bit back here you can see a lot of people even live in this neighborhood they just came out just to you know cheer on some fans and there you go even more of these runners but I'm gonna toss it back to you from the split Pooja, thank you so much. Looks like a great time out there at yeah. the split. Yeah. Called the split because that's where they split off. The half marathoners go straight ahead, and the marathoners make their and way all the way up. But if you're a halfer, you, you don't get in the wrong. We've <laughs> had a couple of problems with that. <laughs> yeah. Those aren't accidents sometimes. <laughs> yeah. We are joined now by a guy who knows how to run. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he just ran for re-election in one handily. So, the mayor of Houston, Good Sylvester morning. Turner, welcome. Good morning, Tom. A little nice chilly out here. It's a little chilly, you. man. Look, happy birthday again. I thank you. Thank day. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And we got a heater under here this morning because Gina Gaston needed. Is that right? That's table. all right. I got some hand warmer. <laughs> you not I'm not taking. <laughs> but it's a beautiful day to run. Yeah, okay. It's great. Biggest single day of sporting events in the city of Houston all year long. It's it's so much fun. It's incredible, and and this year especially because the marathon uh, is gold level. And the half marathon has received that gold level status. And this is the only race in the world where both the marathon and the half marathon have received that designation gold level and both been run on the same day. It's incredible. Very special event for our city. So much work goes into putting this together behind the scenes. We have great corporate sponsors, but a lot of people from the city of Houston, a lot of uh, employees. Thank you, Gina. That people don't don't see. And look, and this is an opportunity for me to give a very special shout out to the city's own people, Susan Christian and her organization with special events. They've been doing this thing for years and years oh, and yes. years. You mean Susan Christian H O F? <laughs> That's Susan Christian. Susan Christian, special <laughs> mayor, special events, city of Houston, and her incredible team. And you know, it's not a lot of people. Yeah. But they just do an incredible job. You would think that there are probably like a hundred people in that office, mm -hmm. uh, but it's less than 20. Wow. And uh, they cover this event and all the parades that's taking place. For example, this weekend, they're doing it all. But I do want to give a special shout out to Chevron. They've been sponsoring this uh, this marathon for 15, 15 years. years yes. Aramco has been sponsoring the half marathon uh, for 16 years. 7,000 plus employees, you know, handling this deal. And then since 1995, this marathon has generated, raised about 31 million plus dollars 
and uh, on this one, 65 different charities. And we have people coming to representing 52 countries and 50 states. So it's an incredible single day event. And, um, and it's an excellent way after, you know, we've, we've had our challenges with sports over the last week. And yes, we have. I was hoping the Texans were going to be playing the day. But yeah. that would have been a bit of a mess in the city of Houston, <laughs> wouldn't it, if the Texans were at home? We'd have, we'd have worked it out, Tom. I know. Okay? I know. We'd have worked that out. But I think we talked about that before. That yeah. would really have been a... Uh, I mean, all the security and everything else oh involving man. the team, and then the marathon. I mean, it would have been a great day. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> but 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 t today, the single largest sporting event, you know, in the yeah, city sure. with, with this marathon, half marathon, uh, a lot of coordination. I want to give us another shout out to law enforcement, Houston Police Department, yeah, all a the lot law of officers, police. a lot of and and look to my public works crew. Yes. The yes. municipal workers. Yes. You know, they're out there. You know, making sure that. <laughs> there are no potholes on the trail, right. things of that nature. So the Houston Public Work employees have, have are just incredible. And then let me just thank you all. You all have just been fantastic at covering this um, this marathon. Well, we every have as much year. fun as the runners, honestly. You know, part of going back to you being a gold event is the fact that people can see this all over the world. So, yeah. so for people who are tuning in all over the world, it's great for them to get a chance to see uh, such a great representation of our city and, like you say, the workers who who help make it possible. Well, you know. This, uh, this week we had we had a uh, uh, 4,600 tweets uh, in town. The, the, the Twitter conference was here. Right. The CEO was in town with all of his people, and they were coming from all over the globe, and they were tweet, tweet, tweeting things <laughs> out. And then uh, a lot of positive impressions. And then now, of course, for the for the marathon to be here with runners coming from all over the world and uh, the exposure that's taking place, it uh, it just benefits Houston on, on so many on so many levels. Economically, we benefit from it. Uh, the positive impressions, and then to have the gold level status. New York can't say that. LA nope. can't say nope. that. Chicago. And no other city in the world can say that. Only H-Town, city of Houston. It's terrific. So uh, it's, it's a wonderful way to start the first year of another decade. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And for those of you who are watching this today, inspired to run next year, we'll get into maybe how you train for a year out. But those of you also inspired to come out and see it, volunteer next year. We got 7,000 yeah. volunteers. Yeah. And you couldn't do it without the volunteers. You couldn't I, pay I, people enough. I don't care. Or you don't have enough money, I should say. There's not <laughs> enough money. There are not enough people. 7,000 thousand incredible volunteers that give up their time every single year and mind you this is not the only thing they do I mean they're yeah. volunteering on other things but if, if you if you ask people to step up Houstonians step up yep. yeah that, that's great with the corporate sponsors they give money but they also give personnel they yeah their, uh, there's no way you can put on this type of event uh, without the personnel without uh, uh, the volunteers and many of them bring the other family members, right. mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So they don't just come themselves, they bring other people. And then, of course, uh, on, a, on a Sunday morning early, you know. And uh, so it's, it's, it, it really makes you Houston proud. Oh, it does. Yeah. It does. Well, Mayor, thank we you. We'll let you go to the finish us. line and greet those half marathoners as they I'm, come in. We're I'm, about I'm looking forward to it. Away. I'm thank looking you. forward. Congratulations thank to you. you. Yeah. And we also want to congratulate again Susan Christian for making it in the Hall of Fame for the Houston Marathon. That's right. That's Susan right. Christian. So. Susan Christian is a Hall of Famer. Yes. So <laughs> she has her jacket on today. <laughs> no, we, we I have it. one of those jackets. <laughs> okay, Thank we want to we want to head out to uh, you. Have a great Sunday, David. Gina. David Nuno, he's at the starting line with the uh, last runner starting. That is right, Gina. Callum Neff here with me. Callum, kind of explain the process here. You're the last runner starting, so that means you got to pass everybody is all for a good cause. That's right, so I was chosen by the Houston Marathon Foundation this year to be the last runner to cross the start line. And uh, yeah, I got a lot of passing to do today, and each person I pass will earn a pledge for the Houston Marathon Foundation. Now, you're an amazing runner, but I gotta give you some props for other things you've done also. You got a world record for running with a stroller with two of your children. Yeah, so I was a runner, became a dad, and I kind of combined the two to keep, you know, the love going for running and uh, show my kids what I do. And, uh, yeah, I was able in 2016 to push my middle daughter, Holly, to a world record in the Katy Half Marathon just down the road in a one hour, 11 minutes, and uh, 231 with my eldest, Ali, uh, at Toronto. So, yeah, really special moments to share with my kids. Congratulations and good luck to you today. Thank you very much. All right, Cal. All right, let's go back to Tom and Gina. 
On the left, you see the men's half marathon leaders, and we're going to check with John Warren, a track coach of Rice University, who's our expert in all things running. Where are we so far in this race? They are uh, under under uh, course record pace. They are flying out there. So right now, they could they could possibly the window that hit them down Montrose. They could uh, so it doesn't look like there's a wind to us, but they could break 59 minutes. They are really really going out there on the half marathon. And remind me, the course record is what? 59.22. 59.22. Fourth fastest time ever run in the United States, and they're on pace for that. Oh, that'd be great. The, the women's marathon is the key right now. She is running 2.20 pace. She is, uh, she is on the left-hand side of your screen. And that, uh, that's a Scala Mar Marachi, I think I pronounced it. Oh, okay, it. so Scala Maya Mar no longer is... No, no, that in, the in the overall marathon. And that's okay. a marathon. Okay. And uh, Maya's still on 65.30. Ania's still on 65.30 pace. She hasn't slowed down at all. I'm still curious where Carolyn is and where the other, and Aga and the favorites are. She, uh, uh, Nia is not one of the, uh, she's not bad, obviously, but she's yeah. not one of the favorites to be in this to win it. And right now, on, on, at least on camera, we haven't been able to see anybody in her screen other when than When I Nia. first brought her up, we could see her on the screen there on the left, but we, we don't have that shot. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with more coverage of the Houston, Chevron Houston Marathon, Aramco Half Marathon in a moment. It is. Coverage of the Chevron Houston Marathon is sponsored by the Houston Marathon Committee. Registration for the 2021 race opens today, 4 p.m. Perfect right there. We can hang this for a while. Hear me, Tom? It's perfect right here. If we can do this for a while, I got her centered head to toe. six marathons now. I had started a nonprofit called Achilles International, the Houston chapter. It's a nonprofit that helps people with disabilities participate in sport. They all wanted to run or wheel the marathon. And when I reached out to the marathon to say, can these hand cyclists and wheelchairs do this? They didn't really have a category or a place for them. So I said, if I help design this division for them, can they participate? Through that kind of partnership is how I started volunteering with the marathon. She's the one who actually got me off my butt again, being mobile. Yeah. Yeah. Saved my life. <laughs> and so we all meet together as a group and hang out and run, and there's a lot of camaraderie and sometimes beers afterwards. So the program itself has grown immensely. Our very first year, we had 10 hand cyclists, and um, we now have a hand cycle division, a wheelchair division, a visually impaired division, and a mobility impaired division. We look forward to coming out here on the weekends to socialize and to work out, and she provided a place for us to do that. Thank you, and thank you for all that you do thank for us. You. And had she not done this, I would probably be sitting on the couch in pain, 
in a world of depression. Every single year when the gun goes off and I get to see all of these athletes that have trained so well to get there, I cry every year. So it's really, it's really rewarding and fun and exciting. It's been like a rock every time you need her, she's there. And those are just some of the volunteers, 7,000 in all, that help put on this race every year and help inspire people. And welcome back to our coverage. Tom Cook along with Gina Gasson and John Warren, the track coach at Rice University, the men's track coach. And we are doing incredibly well in the half marathon, yeah. the men's. Yeah, the men still have this massive pack. Uh, you can see it on the camera. There's like, it looks like there's at least 10 guys, eight, nine guys in this pack. And they're approaching mile 11. They're right at that 59.22 pace. So what will probably happen is they'll slow down just a little bit. Then they'll make the turn if the wind's not in their, fi in their face and make the turn around the parkway and they start racing you could see a really fast last mile and the record's very much in jeopardy okay the record 59 22 keep that in mind that's what we want to beat today and we have a pack that could beat it right both in the marathon and the women's half marathon look at it nia right, right there. The, nia is just totally interesting to me she is not someone on paper that should be doing what she's doing mm -hmm. she's running out of her mind but she like i mentioned earlier she has not run a, a half marathon in, in like eight nine years this is a japanese the runner. japanese runner but been cranking out really good 10Ks. So she's got her own rabbit, and they're on pace to run. The, the Japanese record, uh, the official record, is like 67.26. There's an unofficial downhill record that she's actually on pace to beat as well. And this one will count as it's a legal record. So, John, explain to people who aren't runners what a rabbit is, what their job is, and you mentioned she has her own rabbit. What is he doing for her? He, th th it's, he becomes her brain. He's actually obviously better than she is, so he can run it at a nice, controlled, even pace the whole time and pull her along. So it looks like she's getting antsy, though. But he's going to try to keep her at the, at the rhythm she wants to go. It's a, it's, it's a little bit like cycling when you draft. Mm -hmm. Not near as extreme of a difference as cycling, but it's a little bit better when you sit right behind somebody. I want to so take a look at the perspective, though. because on the left, you see them running, and it looks like they're fast. But when you look from sky eye, yeah, look, they're flying. See, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're really flying. Up, up overhead, it's like, my gosh, they're it looks like a full sprint. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. The the course record is is uh, would be about a 431 mile per mile for 13 of them. So for most of us, that is sprinting. That's a you know that's a 66 six, uh, 67 second 400, and they're doing that for a hundred of them. I mean, it's amazing. So going back to the, to the rabbits for a moment, you, we talked about what her rabbit's doing for her. But in general, for marathons, for half marathons, elite races like this, you bring they hire. These, these runners yes. to do what in to, general? To set the pace. Like you'll see over here on the, uh, that's the, uh, the men's, half. men's half. I think the that. rabbits are gone now. Okay. But they, their, their job is to get you to a certain point in the race. Because what happens is it, you don't want to be the leader in the race. Uh, and you and, and because it's much more difficult to lead than to, than to be dragged along. So what will happen is if you, didn't, if you don't have a rabbit, some elite races do that, it's just a slower race. The rabbit will get you, they're supposed to bring them through 27.50 through the 10K, which is silly fast yeah and then they're on their own and, and those you, and those runners get paid to come and do they that get, they job. get paid to do that some do that for a living and sometimes they win the race v v they do <laughs> yeah it, and that usually because uh they're better athletes than the people that they're rabbiting and that is not going to happen here i looked <laughs> up all the rabbits they're really good but yeah, they're not they're good not enough to beat these guys okay. and right now in this men's race they are the rate the i mean simply put you can tell by watching it, the race is on yeah they're looking around they're 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 not just sitting on each other they're struggling to hang on so guys are trying to 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 um uh, uh set themselves up for the finish because they are they're going through the rolling a little bit of rolling this in allen parkway but Abel is trying to break away from these guys at this point. The guy, the guy on our left, I can't read his number, is struggling to hang on in the white jersey. So it'll he be just interesting. Fell back. To, yeah, he, he, he'll, and he'll try. To, but what he can do, though, and this is where the, the pack helps, he can get in and sit beside behind somebody. If you do that for 30 seconds or a minute, you actually recover a little bit. So no, unless they just fall off the pack, and you'll see a five or ten meter gap, and then they're done. Um, uh, usually, that th everybody's involved in this. That drafting makes that much of a difference. Taking a breather behind somebody so it, you don't have the it's wind. It's just a little bit easier behind there. And also, it, it sometimes it helps you shorten your stride and lets you get in control of yourself a little bit. Okay. It's not like I said. It's not like cycling though, where it's a huge, huge, huge difference. Huge difference. This is like five to ten percent, where cycling is like thirty percent. Now you just said they're trying to set up 
what happens next year as they approach mile 12. Are they thinking, when do I make my kick, or what do I do when I get 300 yards from the finish line and I'm still in the pack? Well, th what they're wondering, is, like, some of these guys are wondering, do I have, somebody in this field do I have goes, the gas no. left? He's like, I know I'm the <laughs> fastest guy out here. I can, I, uh, le pure leg speed. I'm going to sit back and wait for that last 300 meters. Others are in that field going, I know I'm not the fastest guy out here. So I've got, if I'm going to win this, I've got to break these guys early. Now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, there's also a small incentive to not break up because they got all those time bonuses. So there's there's money involved just for oh. finishing well. Uh -huh. So they're going to pull each other through. Every now and then you'll see a race where somebody's leading and is led for a while, and there'll be somebody who sits on them, and they never even try to outkick them because they're just so happy to be pulled through that time. I don't think that's going to happen here. I think there's going to be a great race. I think it's going to get it's, it's going to get really interesting in the next few minutes. Where are they right now getting the course? They're, they're probably five to five and a half minutes to go. So they're coming up on mile they're, twelve. Or yeah, so. they should be right okay. at twelve now. At twelve, okay. That's and you are looking now at the women's half on your left, the men's half marathon on the right. We have one woman who is out in front. This is that Japanese runner we've been telling you about, who John said was not expected to do what she is doing today, but she is certainly keeping up with her rabbit. That's the guy on the right. And I saw him looking around to see if anyone was behind him, and then this guy came up on the back. Wait, wait, so wait. she's also trying to get a Japanese record, I think you said, right? Yes, she's going for the Japanese half record. What's uh, kind of interesting, and it's a gender difference, is you'll notice with the men, no matter what, they'll sit right behind you. Mm -hmm. And, 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 uh, and uh, I, I think it's something that they even see in college a lot. The women will get on your shoulder. They don't, they don't mm -hmm. like to get in that line. And you'll see men's races, they're lined up in a perfect straight line. Mm -hmm. is, I, don't know, I don't know if one's being nice or the other one's being, how that works out, but it's always oh, interesting to I watch. I love that. Like Look she wants that. to stay on his shoulder, and I can hear that like you might see them get back in the line at some point. Yeah, we and you we showed a 20-mile-hour per hour um, clock. graphic a moment ago. Is that, is that how fast they're running, 20 <laughs> miles an hour? <laughs> what was that? Okay, well, I'll, I'll await that. Just I'll await that reply. So, see, when they spread out like this, mm -hmm. this is when they're really getting antsy. So, yeah, they are. They are. They're, they're running. They're running just at 13 miles an hour. Right. 13, 13 miles, miles and 50, an 60 okay. minutes. Right. So it's just over 13 miles an hour if they finish it in under 60. Right. Remember, 15 miles an hour is four flat mile pace. Right. So it could be sitting in that range. But when they start spreading out like that, uh -huh. that's when they're getting ready to go. It's like, if you, if you ever watched the Tour de France, they'll be in those perfectly straight lines. Yeah. And when it gets ready to roll, they and take up the whole road. Away, yeah. That's what they're getting ready to do. So get your, get your yeah, room. Somebody's yeah. about to do make a massive move. And that overhead shot from Skya, you can tell some of the guys are struggling. The guy in the white jersey, he looks as though he's still trying to keep up right there. Yeah. Right there at the yeah, back of the pack. He doesn't look near as comfortable. No, it's just a comfort level, right, that you feel at the end you can keep your arms swinging in a fashion that keeps you moving. <laughs> Yeah, and, and what he'll do is, is, like, he knows that it's that for him to beat, say, the guy that just fell off, as hard as it is, I, if I stay here for one more minute, if I stay, and you talk your way through it, if I stay mm -hmm. here one more minute, mm -hmm. I may not beat these guys I'm with, but I'll beat that guy behind me. Because right. if he falls off, and that could be it. This is a mind game, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it, and, you're, and you're convincing yourself you can do it. Haven't we all been there in a workout where you, like, you have to make that decision and you... Right. I mean, every every runner has to at some point talk themselves into the next level. But yep. every now and then, like if he stays and just stares at the the guy the, the guy in the white jersey, stares at the guy in front of him, just stays there and stays there, he might get to 300 meters to go and go. You know what? I feel pretty yeah, good. I can make really? it. Yeah, I, I, yeah. It can it can as long as you're in it. But it, I mean, he he. So none of these guys look terrible. I mean, some years we've seen like the arms drop yep. and they they don't look terrible yet. So pretty the close three, to the, the official three men time. in the same in the same colored training uniform. They're all from the same country. It means they're they're sponsored by the, by Nike. That's a sponsored Nike uniform. Sponsored by Nike. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, was, I mean, you know, we had a lot of people from Ethiopia. And if it was a country. No, they're they're, they're, they're usually sponsored. they have shoe sponsors or or, or and some other. And we are seeing of. those shoes. We are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are, and we're going to talk about those yeah. coming up right after the half marathon. We'll give you an idea of what kind of advantage those shoes actually give people. On the clock, 57 minutes now. We are trying to break 59.22 instead of brand new Houston Marathon half marathon he's record. He's a pacer too. We got two pacers running with her. The, the, in, the, in this race here, they came through the 12 mile mark on a, on, on a sub 59 pace. I mean, they're, they're running that. Wow. They're, they're, I think if, if the splits are correct that I just got, they, they will, th their record's gone. Record, 59 really? 59 22. It looks like they're going to get the record. This is going to be a, a, a tremendous showing. Okay, why did All right, here they the come. Right now. <laughs> Finish line right behind us, and we're going to have this finish in less yeah, than a minute now. It should be about a minute or so. This is going to be amazing. And do we know who's leading the pack as of yet? 
It looks uh, Jamal Yimmer's leading Jamal this Yimmer. pack. He's going to 58-33. And he's the one who lost it last year. Yeah. Came uh, in second. My goodness. Uh, number 46 is Jeffrey Koetch. He's falling off a little bit. There's a Bernard Nagano. It looks like he's going to try to make a move. He doesn't look good right now. So it would be really interesting if Nagano, yeah, he looks like he's he's trying to hang on. Yeah. Yimmer looks great. The other three yeah. look like they're struggling. That doesn't mean they're going to he's going to win, but he looks really good right now. And sure, Katato is not in there anymore. Is he's he not in there at all. He's who won it here last year, and Jamal Yimmer well, placed well, second he in could the be race. Look at the – this is amazing. They, all those guys could break 59 or get really close to it. Wow. Remember, only one man in this field, and that's the leader right now, has ever broken 59. The others run 59.07 to 59.50. So they they may be running the race of their life and still end up fourth. Wow. Uh, be, <laughs> well, someone's going to run the race of their life and not even be in the prize money. He'll be in the bonus money, but he won't okay. be in the prize money. All right, time to beat 59.22, and we're just about 30 seconds away from that. They should be coming in our sight. Oh, it's going to be close. They're not going to make – they're not going to break 59. Uh -oh. They are we not. Should, yeah, we should be able to see them by now if they're going to do that. All right, oh. we got 22 seconds for I a new record. I hope I didn't get excited for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> it happens comes to me all they come. the time. They just made the turn. Can they do it? 59.06. He knows he's coming to break a uh, record. He he's got 12 just, seconds. He is he's, just, trying to, he's trying to pump it up. He is just going to miss it or make it. Here we go. He's we'll see it. Smiling. Jamal Yimmer. Of Ethiopia, and he's going to cross it right at, oh, either one second there or just on one, time. Two, three, four. It was at 59.23. It sure was. Unofficially. There is. And I felt like he slowed down at the <laughs> end. I'm like, do you know how close? <laughs> <laughs> what a race. What a race. Beautiful this run, is though. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful run. Yeah, that could have cost him money for a bonus there. There's eight or nine people that broke 60. Last year was running 60.08, the year before 60.01. And at least eight guys broke 60 today. All right, here's one uh, of the uh, members of the hand cyclists, and we have a number of them running today. I think 18 yeah, hand cyclists, great. and they are coming in. And then wheelchair runners, four of them. There's our first finisher in the hand cyclist and our winner in the wheelchair race right behind him. And another pack of men that are coming in really, really close. This is the half marathon once again. We have an unofficial time of 59.23 is what I saw. 50. But if he hit the tape there's, for just a second. There's Nia there. She does have two pacers of her own. Right. <laughs> and, and, and she's still not sitting behind either one. No. <laughs> so where's the rest of the pack of women? I, way behind. We haven't they're, seen they're them all day. They haven't been we close haven't seen at the all. other women all day. And she's running well, but she's not running things that uh, Chef Coach couldn't run or Aga couldn't run. I mean, uh, let, let me see if I can find the last split. Well, this is 65.50 is the course record here, and that's what we're looking for today, for her to beat 65.50, just under 66 minutes, an hour and six minutes. Yeah, she's got five minutes uh, time to spare for that. And she's on 66.26 pace right now, which is a minute better than the official record, and actually under that unofficial record. That The unofficial means it's a downhill course or something. Okay. It's, it's not a fair thing to to do it. An official course has to start within a short start and finish close together and then not have too an elevation drop very much. Okay. But the course record here is 65.50? Right. And she's all, she's not going to get, she's faded from that a little bit. Okay. But she's still way under the, a minute under right now predicting under the what the Japanese record is going to be. Can you tell by looking at her how she feels? She looks the same as she did earlier in the, in the, in the race. I mean, she looks the same. Same form, no real breakdowns. Oh, this is amazing. She is out of the pack all by herself, here's way here's out ahead. Here's like your American pack coming in. The American half marathoners cross the finish line now. This is, I mentioned earlier that 62 minutes, how good 62 minutes was. This is 61. This is, this is, look how happy like Brogan is. He runs 61.50. That is such a good time. Matt Lano, I mean, these are these are PRs across the board. These are massive PRs. Oh, they're all hugging. <laughs> yeah, PR is a personal record. I mean, yes. th this is 61 minutes wins this. Of some, uh, used oh, to yes. win this it some years. Oh, yeah, used Now you're Not like talking ago. about 20th, 25th. And again, they all got time bonuses. <laughs> the time bonus is at what point again? Uh, I think it's under 62. Under yeah. 62, okay, yeah. So yeah. 61 minutes in 2014. 61.25, yeah. so you <laughs> many of them broke that today easily. Wow. I love the camaraderie, though, with each other as they cross the finish line well, and give each other hands. Well, you're not competing with each other anymore when you're going for time. 
Tomi Nia, the leader in the women's half marathon, as you look on the left of your screen, on the right, the finish line, and uh, there is the winner right there, Jamal Yimmer. No, 61.30 was the last time bonus. So a, few, a bunch of guys got that, but not everybody that we just saw. Okay, and we're still waiting to see whether Jamel Yimmer actually set a new record here. We thought he crossed the finish line just a second behind 59.22, but we will see in terms of the official. And on the left. He was so leader. close. He I mean, was he, so he close. Did, he slowed down at the end. I was like, oh. Yeah. Well, you can see the clock. It's a huge clock, yeah. and you're running toward it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now you can see there's a little distress in her face. But she's only got three minutes to go. She's going to get that record. She's on pace to go 66.32. And is he talking to her? He is talking to he her, is. isn't he? Yeah. He's saying, come on, you can do it. So, yes, uh, yeah, he, he's able to encourage her along. He's... John, I do not see any women close to her I at know, all. We, we just I haven't seen a woman all day. Right, and, and like I said, they're, 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 they've run, well, this time she's going to run is just, just outstanding. I mean, if she runs in the 6630s, it'll put her in the top five ever run in the uh, in the United States, in, wow. in the USA. It told me now you're trying to set a new Japanese and record as well. I can't believe she hasn't run in, in years, hasn't run this this event in years. She's trying to come under she 66 comes. minutes. 66.39 is the fast, the third fastest ever run in the United in the United States. So she's on track to be one of the best ever. And here she comes. I heard them announcing maybe a minute or two away her name, here uh, to our to the crowd behind us. So I know she's coming into sight. She, she, she's probably got a couple more minutes till we see her. Okay. And but she, did, she is hammering right yeah. now. And we are actually yep. looking at another pace game you don't see on screen of the women's half, and there isn't a woman anywhere near her, maybe not even three or 400 yards behind her. Great shot from Sky Eye this morning as she comes into downtown Houston, just about a minute away from an incredible finish in the women's half marathon here. This Aramco half marathon has just produced some exciting finishes in the last couple of years, John. Oh, yeah. this one's not gonna be an exciting finish because she's just dominating this field so much. <laughs> well, it's exciting true. for her and her it family. It is exciting for her. <laughs> oh, this is, to, to go for a, and a, perhaps all a, of thir a 13 year old record. The, uh, the wow. actual, the, the unofficial record was set like in 1998. Oh, this wow. is like the, uh, a 20 something year old record. She breaks it unofficial record. 65, how, how 50. How do you go from not even running this, this event in, in seven years and then just I, dominate She's like just that. focused on the track for a while and put up some really, really good track times. Now you see the guys turning around, encouraging her. Both of them talking to her oh, now. Oh yeah, they're, come they're, on, keep it going. Th this is a training run for them. I mean, to be fair, this is their, that's what they're out there for. But she, they're not trying to talk her into like, hey, you know how how close it is. And she's probably thinking, please don't talk. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not very comfortable right now, but this is still really good. All right, Hitomi Nayo, just about 30 seconds away from her own record, the Japanese record in the half marathon for you women. You can see how fast well, she's still I, going, though. What, what I would be telling her is like, you see that guy in yellow? You see that Catch guy in yellow? Him, huh? Go get that guy Go in yellow. Him. I mean, you're yeah. like anything to get her to focus on the very short term. Don't, don't be saying things like, are you hurting? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How are your feet? <laughs> yeah. So they'll, they'll stop here in a second to get out of the way normally. <laughs> He's directing He's where she's going to go. Yeah. And making sure she stays on course. She went around the wrong cone. Oh, can't tell you how confusing it is to finish one of these things. You're, you're not the brightest person in the world. Mentally, you're just fatigued. Oh, yeah. You're just, yeah, you, you, you have an IQ of about 12. Yeah. And here she comes behind us now. All right, we're not going to get a new record, but this is an exciting race for her. That right, is this will be sure. the Japanese record, though. She's smiling now. This is. <laughs> Yay. Yep. 106.37. Yeah, that, that breaks the official and the unofficial record. So it breaks the official and unofficial And the unofficial, record. yeah. Awesome. So that's a le and that's now the legal record for Japan. And I'm just cu curious how far behind everybody else is. And that and that also makes her the, the third fastest. There she is. The yeah. half marathon ever run in the United States. The third fastest? The third fastest. Wow. Well, wow. Uh, the, uh, that now makes uh, nine, uh, nine of the top ten best marathon half marathons for women ever run in the United States have been run here over here, the years. In here Houston, in, Houston. in Houston. Wow. This is, this is normal. What's not normal is that the other f runners aren't in sight yet. Yeah. Because they, they, well, they weren't on camera yeah, from is, the gun. This is a big split between her and the rest of the females. Mm -hmm. 
and very surprising. All right. Very surprising. The, the, Bob the, Slovak now with Javel Yimmer of Ethiopia, our winner of the men's half marathon. Bobby? Yeah, Tom, we were here with Javel who uh, sprinted to the finish, second time running here in Houston. What was it like? What were the conditions like today? Yeah, uh, it's good condition. Uh, uh, the best running in Addis Ababa, uh, high altitude and uh, hostel altitude and uh, Addis altitude uh, are the same. You had a, you, you, great pace right at the right at the course record mark. You had four other guys sprinting with you. What was the finish like coming in that last mile? Uh, yeah, uh, pace, pace is good. Uh, and. Uh, uh, I, I have yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, Did yes. you know you were, did it feel like you were running that fast? Yeah. 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 Not, not a personal best for you though, not a PR. Yeah. Not a PR. Yeah. 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 run faster? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I PV uh, 58 uh, secretary and from uh, in Ethiopia national record holder. Okay, great. Let's have the folks from Aramco come in and present the belt buckle for us. Congratulations on behalf of Aramco. We congratulate you in your work, uh, class record. Congratulations. Congratulations, Jimmer. Thank you. There you have it. Half marathon winner, close to a course record, Tom. All right, Bob. Congratulations to him. Of course, he was the guy who raced his best last year and ended up second place. But this year, he is right there, first at the finish yeah, line. Yeah, it was an awesome, awesome run for him. Glad to see him finish so well. And right. as we showed you a minute ago, an awesome run for a runner who came here from Japan to to set a record for her country and did so. Okay, now John, here we see women in the half marathon finally coming across the I've finish line. I've seen several pass over now. This, this is, Juan Jury's uh, run here a number of years and placed really well. She may have placed well today. And some of the Americans, oh, that's a great run for Seidel. To be sub 70. This is a great run for Alphine Tumuk. This, these, are, these are good runs by the Americans breaking 70. We're going to take a Tasha. short break and come back with more from the finish line in just a moment. Coverage of the Chevron Houston Marathon is sponsored by the Houston Marathon Committee. Registration for the 2021 race opens today at 4 p.m. Just get up and go. Just That's do it. it. Anything is possible. Sign up now. Sign up, Sign up now. now. 2021 Chevron Houston Marathon registration opens today at 4 p.m. You know what? It starts with one mile. Put one foot in front of the other. Register now to secure the lowest available price. Visit ChevronHoustonMarathon.com. Sign up, guys. We are Aramco Americas creating business opportunities for our partners, developing technology and sustainability breakthroughs in our labs, searching for energy solutions, working alongside the community on things that matter. We are professionals and neighbors, working to make a difference. We're proud to sponsor the We Are Houston 5K and the Aramco Houston Half Marathon. I, I think I'm as ready as I can be. I'm ready, but clearly I'm a little nervous. There are so many expectations, like on the sticker, city mileage this, highway that. That's a lot to live up to, but I heard no gas gets better mileage than Chevron with Techron. Yeah, no better mileage. It's proven. So that's a confidence builder. It's proven no gas gets better mileage than Chevron with Techron. Care for your car. <laughs> so much for my new car smell, guys. Let's go, Houston! Place up! Just get up and go. Just That's do it. it. Anything is time. possible. Sign up now! Sign up, Sign up now. now! 2021 Chevron Houston Marathon registration opens today at 4 p.m. You know what? It starts with one mile. Put one foot in front of the other. Register now to secure the lowest available price. Visit ChevronHoustonMarathon.com. Sign up!
Welcome back to the Chevron Houston Marathon Aramco Half Marathon. I'm here with the women's half marathon winner, Hitomi Mia from Japan. Congratulations. We're going to help with the help of an interpreter, ask her a few questions. She was emotional at the finish. What, what was that like? <laughs> I was super happy, super happy to win, super happy to get the Japanese national record. First time running here in Houston, uh, ran a great race, a uh, very fast pace. What was it like along the route? Eh, to kong kai wa na hatsu Houston half marathon to nemashita. Eh, to zen han kanari high high pace de kimashita to ita to omemas. Eh, to doyu race deshita. To Nihon kara no pace maker dake jana ku gaijin no pace maker, gaijin no senshi dachi mo kyoryoku shite kurete pace kurete kureta nde. Uh, I brought a friend from Japan to pace, but um, all of the local guys who were in the race uh, also kind of gathered around and supported me and really helped me along. So I really appreciated getting the help from all the locals and the, the, from the crowds along the course as well. Uh, it's safe to say she loves running in Houston. <laughs> Houston I love you. I love Houston. That's awesome. I love the smile of the folks from Aramco here with the winning belt. Congratulations on behalf of Aramco. Good job. Good job. Good job. Uh, there, you, there you have it. The smile says it all. Congratulations. The half marathon winner. I bet she does love Houston. Oh, you got it. Wow. What a race that was. And yeah. So far ahead of the rest she of the pack dominant. this morning. Yep. Well, we are joined here on the set by Alma Kambarji, who is uh, the director of brand strategy here for Ramco and good morning to you. Good morning. What a show you're putting on today. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're breaking all sorts of records. I love it. I love it. Everything worked out. The weather, the runners. We've been very lucky. Yep. Tell us a little bit about why Ramco like sponsoring this event. Well, it's our favorite time of the year, really. It kicks off a year long of uh, community involvement for us. But this is just look at the energy and amazing athletes and what I love about it, it gets together the old and the young and the volunteers and the athletes and, you know, everybody together. It just makes it happen. I'm You've hesitant to even call people old who at, at 83 are running marathons. <laughs> right. We have an 89-year-old running the half marathon yeah. today. Oh, I didn't know that. 89 yeah. years yeah. old. Aww. 89 running marathons. That's very inspiring. No, it is running inspiring. Half. Do you have a number of employees running today? We have 78 employees running, and we had over 220 volunteers throughout right. the weekend helping out we right. love like i said we love this event it's our favorite event yeah. it's so upbeat well you've been with us 16 years we have been uh, we love uh, being involved with the community and so we keep coming back every year we keep coming back hopefully we're trying to grow the race this year is our second year to sponsor the 5k mm -hmm. so 16 years on the uh, half and two years on the 5k well congratulations and we certainly appreciate your contribution to this event and to our community thank you thank you we thank love you. being involved. Alma Kabarji of Aramco, and thank you. Yeah. Let's make it 17 next year, okay? <laughs> All right. Okay. Get a commitment ahead of time. All right, Courtney Fisher is live now, and she is at mile, let's see, uh, Courtney is at mile six and seven. Good morning to you once again, Courtney. Good morning, guys. Yeah, this is awesome. Now we're seeing the amount, huge amount of runners come up. And actually, Chaz Miller was just running. You're it's running the marathon, full marathon. I am. And you know, like I feel good at six miles in, but then you realize there's 26 or 20 to go, <laughs> and then you don't feel so good anymore. <laughs> you might recognize Chaz. Obviously, he does a lot of our localish stuff, which is so awesome that he took the time to stop. I'm sorry, you have a lot more to go. No, it's okay. But it you're me, raising money. That's good. Okay, yeah. I like it. You're raising money for cystic fibrosis, right? I am, yeah. It's a lung disease. My mom worked there when I was a kid, and I got some friends that have a kid with cystic fibrosis, so I thought it'd be a good way to do something I like, which is running, and then raise a little bit of money at the same which time. So awesome. Yeah. If you haven't checked out that story, actually, it's up on ABC13.com. The, the child that Chaz interviewed, it's such an incredible story. We are at the corner where there are a lot of these charities yeah. that runners are raising money for. Cystic fibrosis, of course, just one of them. And that's one of the cool things. Like I got this bottle of water from a charity back around mile four, and it's just cool to see charities and people and runners and non-runners kind of get together and have a good day. Yeah. It's really one of my favorite days of the year, despite having to run 26.2 <laughs> miles. <laughs> right, but so. it's a gorgeous day to do it. Yeah, it feels good. And you've got a lot more to go, so we'll let you go now. All right, thanks, Courtney. Okay, bye, bye, guys. And I think we have Chaz's story up. I think my producers are telling us. So we're going to toss to that now, and we'll send you out with that.
Well, you're watching the leaders now in the men's marathon, and we will get to Chaz Miller's story in just a few minutes here because he really is one of our inspiring employees going out there and running for a reason, mm -hmm. as we've been telling you all day long. We've raised more than $33 million so far in the run for a reason in the last, oh, 20 years since it started. Yes, something like that. So what an incredible race. Now, here are the leaders in the men's marathon, and we've got John Warren checking that out. But now we are joined on the set by Mr. Marathon. Mr. Marathon, Meb Kesleski. Boy, you are you are <laughs> all over the place here these days. The only guy to have won the Boston, the New York Marathon, and an Olympic medal. Welcome. Thank you so much. Hey. Great to be here in Houston, nice as always. What do you think of the race so far, the half marathon? The half marathon was fast. It was great. You know, it was a very tight finish for the men, and uh, obviously the woman, the Japanese girl, just ran away from it early yeah. on. But sometimes you got those dark horses coming and uh, make a name for themselves but it's always just great the weather was nice ideal here and uh, it, w it was a lot of fast times we want to check in uh, for a moment john to see where we are looking right now on right the course now, the most exciting thing going on right now is the women's pool where where, um, where escala america is running is running 220s right now, running the 220 marathon. That is, that's a, a, a course record by three minutes at this and pace. There's no, there. like, yeah, just like, just, just like, like in the half, there's nobody in sight of her now, and that happens when you run a 220. She's just that far out of the field. The the uh, men's marathon is running about 206.30. They're slow. They're kind of playing right at that course record pace right now. They're running 449, 450, 448, and they're spreading out a little bit. The rabbit in that race, that pace is doing a phenomenal job pulling right. along. And you've got uh, the favorite in the race was uh, Kekeli Gezahain, and he's right up there with it. And a late entry, um, Emmanuel uh, is, is our right behind him. And there's a few folks in sight back there. I think it's what looks like is happening on the women's side. You're having this one great performance, and everyone falling off. Uh -huh. On the men's side, I think you're going to be right at or just slower than the course record. But a whole bunch of guys are running really, really fast. Yeah, it just it seems like a good day for running. <laughs> it, you know, the weather's always great here in Houston, yeah. and people turn to the holidays days and then they want to start the you kick off the year really great here and they've been training and, and the weather cooperates they're ready to go and show their you know their their fitness and if you and if patience there's a virtue yeah you know, as we saw last year here something really hap bad happened at the end and yeah you got to be able to just measure yourself and know know that how much energy you have left and obviously the men are doing that and then the woman she's up on the front by herself and you gotta be, you gotta measure right because the weather is chilly, but you don't want to get hypothermia and things like that. You gotta be careful with calorie intake and all that stuff. Yeah. As I said, you were one of the most decorated runners in United States history. 23 national championships, 2004 silver medal at the Olympics. There, the only guy to have won Boston, New York, and an Olympic medal. When you watch this, what goes through your mind? Does this just bring all that back? It does. It definitely does bring it back. You know, to be here, you know, win the trials, and then, you know, even when you're walking around, you got that eager that you. Know, the, the great memories but you know you see your fellow competitors here there you know you see them walking around and kind of saying hi and, and then when the race go, when the gun goes off you are <laughs> be able to see hey see what their secrets are and see what their talents are and you have to be careful like you know measure i, I keep saying it but you got to measure right because 26 marathons it can i mean uh, 26 miles a lot of things going can go wrong yeah and yeah. with the weather a little bit windy you gotta cover up and keep warm we want to we want to have you stand by of course we want to head out to ted oberg uh, our reporter who's out there on the course ted Hey, as a sometimes runner, to stop Meb to listen to me is, I'm not certain that's the best decision. But this is a great morning. These are about five hour marathoners. They are out for a great run. <clears throat> it's getting a little colder, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, from the start until now, the wind has definitely picked up and it is definitely colder. I've seen some runners uh, throw down some of their now expired uh, hand warmers. How you guys feeling? Still a happy bunch out here. <clears throat> you feeling all right? Feeling great. So, and how's the course? The course, beautiful. It's a great day. Perfect. And for, and for someone who's not out on the course yet to come watch you run, should they come out and see this? Absolutely. We can use the fans. Just stay with me. We'll get you going. All right. Well, we've got 22 <laughs> miles left. All right. Let's all right, guys. I got to go. See you later. <laughs> hey, Corey. Hello. How's it going? It's Uncle Chris. So Corey is my great niece, and you know she means the world yeah. to us, and she's affected by this disease, MLD. Thanks for taking care of sweet Corey. I'm gonna use my running as 
that mechanism to be able to help her out. Chris is my uncle, and Chris is just an amazing person. <laughs> He's one of my best friends in the whole world. He started Run Over MLD. So I decided to come up with this crazy idea to run on all seven continents and, and do a marathon there and to raise awareness and um, raise some funding and support. Corey was diagnosed with MLD, metachromatic leukodystrophy, around Christmas after her second birthday. Average life expectancy for kids with metachromatic leukodystrophy is five. It's a double recessive disorder, so both parents have to have the recessive gene, and both parents have to give the kid the recessive gene. And by lacking this enzyme, Corey's body builds up these amino acids that destroy the white matter in her brain and her central nervous system. She never really walked by herself, and she had this cute little pull-behind walker that she could walk with, and around Christmas of that year, she had quit using the walker altogether. Even though MLD is such a uh, degenerative disease, uh, you, know, she, you know, her mind and her personality are still there. She is still very much a fiery eight-year-old. She likes butterflies and she likes frozen and she likes trolls and she will answer you with blinks she's super smart she figured out a way to communicate with us even though she couldn't talk for families with rare diseases you know sometimes they feel like they're completely alone in the world living in new zealand and, and she's here in houston it's you know what can you do <laughs> You know, running and, and doing advocacy, it, it'll help, you know, more people, you know, in the future that, that have MLD. It's important for me to run the Houston Marathon because, you know, it's my hometown. I, you know, I haven't lived here in a long time. I really started all of this distance running and I've run pretty much around the world. And I ran the Sydney Marathon, the Antarctic Ice Marathon, and then went on to Europe and ran in the Paris Marathon, uh, the Tokyo Marathon. Ran a race called the Big Five Marathon through the African bush. I went to the Atacama Desert in Chile. We ran a race called the Volcano Marathon. You know, whenever I'm running these crazy races and I, you know, start hitting the wall or wondering why am I doing this? Yeah, it's the least we can do for her because we love her very much. Runners depend on the weather forecast because getting caught in the rain is no fun. That's why I depend on the ABC 13 Houston app for hour by hour weather forecasts. It's convenient, it helps me plan my day and my training. I'm not lacing up without checking it first. I, I think I'm as ready as I can be. I'm ready, but clearly I'm a little nervous. There are so many expectations, like on the sticker, city mileage this, highway that. That's a lot to live up to, but I heard no gas gets better mileage than Chevron with Techron. Yeah, no better mileage. It's proven. So that's a confidence builder. It's proven. No gas gets better mileage than Chevron with Techron. Care for your car. <laughs> so much for my new car smell, guys. You have to dig deep to find the motivation to change. Change is hard. Change takes time. Change demands sacrifice. ViewSport's sweat-activated technology was developed to motivate you to go that extra mile, to hustle harder, to visibly show your work so you can push further. Performance apparel designed to show the making of a champion. ViewSport. Motivation. Just get up and go. Just That's do it. it. Anything One day is possible. Sign up now. Sign up, Sign up now. now. 2021 Chevron Houston Marathon registration opens today at 4 p.m. You know what? It starts with one mile. Put one foot in front of the other. Register now to secure the lowest available price. Visit ChevronHoustonMarathon.com. Sign up, guys. fibrosis was probably just the first hospital stay. Cystic fibrosis affects primarily the lungs, and the lungs fill with um, sticky mucus. There is no cure. The breathing treatments suck. They're not hard. Uh, it's just annoying. I have to stop in the middle of whatever I'm doing. I have to come back. Yes, he does his treatments. Yes, he takes his medications, but I felt like I could do more for him. In 2012, I found out about the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation because um, I was going to run 
in the marathon and I was like, oh my gosh, there's this foundation that helps people and it became a family thing. My whole family is going to run the marathon. Uh, my mom, my aunt, my stepdad, my brother, my sister and I, we're all going to be running it together and it's a fantastic thing. I'm going to be running the half marathon. It's probably going to be really great because I'm running for my brother and I love him a lot. I thought it was really cool because I actually got to run for a reason and not just to run for myself. I started running when my sister did it. My sister and I did it together. We grabbed hands to cross that finish line and it's a lot of pride. Of pride that we were able to do it, but that we finished what we started and that we were able to make a difference yep. in James's life. None of us might make it to 80 or one of us might not make it till tomorrow. It, it's, it's a good rem uh, reminder about what's really important. He's never had a pity party and said, why do I have to have this? He just rolls with it. It's rewarding to run the whole thing and then finally pass the finish line. There's all those people cheering for you. But really to me, I run because I like to see my family at the end. Oh, they got it. Hold on. And welcome back to the 48th running of the Chevron Houston Marathon, the 18th running of the Aramco Half Marathon, and we have had a great race in the half so far, and we'll update you on the full marathon in just a minute. John Warren, Rice University's track coach, Gina Gaston, Tom Cook, and Mr. Marathon, Mev Kesleski, one of the most decorated runners in American history, talking about a little controversy, because yeah. this is the new Nike shoe called the Vapor Fly, John, which some say gives it advantage. This is Mev Kesleski's Skechers that he runs on, so you see the difference in the heel. So tell us what this shoe does versus this shoe. What this shoe is designed to do, it has two things going on that, that arguably make it kind of a machine within the shoe. One is just this pure, the, the type of material they use in this midsole and the thickness of it has a response. It, it actually gives a little bit of energy back. But also what you can't see inside here is a carbon fiber plate. Have you ever seen the runners that are Paralympians that have the, the, the legs that, are, that, are, that, that aren't real legs? That's what's in here. And this shoe is purported to actually project you forward a little bit. At a minimum, it takes some of the stress off of you, especially in a marathon between the 15th mile to the, the end of the, of the race. But it does make it easier. If you look at Bridget Koski, who last year set the, the USA all coverage record here at 65.50. In, 2000, in 2017, she ran a 220 two marathon. In 2018, she ran a 218 two marathon. In 2019, she ran a 214 two, two marathon. She beat her 2017 self by a mile and a half almost. You don't, you don't get better like that. You don't drop those times off. She beat the old marathon time by a minute. In the women's 15K, I think it's one of the best examples, the girl set the road record. Her last 10K, the 15K, was faster than the track world record. That has to be, I, I believe that has to do with the shoes. The, the shoe yeah, built. the shoes help. So, Meb, what do you think about people being able to race in shoes like these as opposed to traditional tennis shoes? And I'm pretty sure it has a fair amount of advantage. You know, when you see lined up to the starting line, you want to be able to say, I worked hard, and even if and somebody worked harder than me, they deserve to beat me, they deserve to win. That's how I used it in the past for me. If anybody turned them harder than me and beat me, you know what, congratulations. But this is definitely at a fair advantage. And, you know, for Skechers, you know, this doesn't have the carbon fiber, but for me, it was the, like the third degree burn that you get because of the support you don't have, and now to have the carbon fiber is, you know, you know, but but how do you put it, the genie back in the bottle? <laughs> right. Yeah, as technology develops, I mean, all shoe manufacturers are going to go to it at one time. Go for that, and then uh, you know, that's the cushion. It's going to take a little bit of time now, you know. But with the trials been like six weeks away from, and the other shoes have not started yet. But you know, you can see, you see it with the average runners. People tell me, you know, I was in like 249 shape, and uh, I'm running 245. You know, there's a big time going on. But you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, you know. Technology is important. People will watch, and people use that. Before we used to estimate how many miles we're gonna go. We're gonna go 10 miles estimate. But now with the GPS, you can say, no, I ran 10 miles exactly, and then 40 in the afternoon, things like that. But with the shoes now, some of them are using that, not even sponsored. So, you yeah. know, it's a, you know they, 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 I mean, I held them before, but I never endorsed. I'm completely happy with my skin.
Skechers, 100%. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, and I've, I've, I've run on your Skechers before. They're fantastic shoes. But Gina raises a great question. How do you put the genie back in the bottle, John? And is there some kind of effort that's being made to take that out of the race? Yes. The, the right now, the, the stories are coming out of England. That prior to the London Marathon, these will be outlawed. Because because uh, yes. there's a rule that says it has to really be easily available to everybody. By, and these are $250 in this country, and they're almost $400 over in England. So they're not easily accessible to everybody. It, al it also, uh, I, I've heard different arguments. One side is, like, of course, you can regulate it. NASCAR regulates, you know, bikes regulate to make it fair across the board. The flip side is, does it compare more to the pole vault? Whereas back in the 60s, people went from steel poles to fiberglass, and it's just technology changed. So I see the debate on both sides. Yeah. I do think they are going to take these out. And you won't see that colorful starting line like we had today. Yeah, right? today we could definitely see a dominance of... The neon shoes. The neon color shoes at the starting line. And you know, the, and the, the measurement is the, the amount of carbon fiber. And if it's going from the front to the back, and, or you know, if you can have some stiffness and one millimeters for a little bit partial of it, it's possible. But to be able to have the, the whole thing. And I think they should make them run the race in one of these <laughs> and one of these, and let's see how they do, OK? No, one 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 I was going to ask, though, don't you think a, a company like yours will try and do their version of something like this? Well, absolutely. But I mean, I think uh, you know, it's been a hit game, and it's just probably had a years. And you know, the, we de the development of goals on with the you know with the, the improvement. So this is the goal ride eight. You know, then then you have this, and then you have the next person, and then then you have the next. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. yeah. Always somebody at the head of the game. Yeah. yeah. One of the concerns has to be that we price people out of out of doing this. Sure. That the idea is that the basic level shoe to be involved is two, three, four hundred dollars. Now you've limited your number of people that can actually take part. And in, in one of the beauties yeah. of this sport is it's so cheap. Yeah, the shoes might be ninety to one hundred twenty dollars, but at some point we're going to cross a threshold where they're just too expensive. I guess you could price people out of the market though at ninety or hundred dollars as well. That's true yeah. too. Yeah. 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 All right, we have David Nuno who's in the Galleria area, the Galleria area this morning, South Post Oak in San Felipe, and let's go to him. David, good morning. Hey, good morning, Tom. Mile 15, we were at the start line, and we made our way out here, and we're hanging out with our friends from the Star of Hope. Scott Archer's going to join us here, and Scott, the Star of Hope has benefited so much from the Houston Marathon over the years, Chevron Houston Marathon. Talk a little bit about what it means, especially when these athletes are taking off their clothes as they're getting ready to roll. Yeah, we have uh, a number of men and women who are running today for Star of Hope, and, and all the thousands of runners, uh, as they continue to run, they start to shed their clothes because it gets warmer and warmer. And it's a win-win because the race officials at the end of the race actually collect them and give them to Star of Hope to help their homeless. Got a big contingency here with you too. What, St. Agnes is here helping you guys out. Tell me who's all with you. St. Agnes and uh, Bel Air and just a whole bunch of people who saw the Star of Hope sign and said, we know you had runners, we're here to support you. And I understand you have Mark with us as well who's running how many of these? Mark is a legacy runner. He's run 44 marathons, 24 Houston marathons. <laughs> Mark, I gotta ask you, man, what keeps you coming back here every year? Well, I actually have retired from running marathons because I really got too old to run them, but I, I just really enjoy the experience. It's uh, it's a very challenging thing to do, and I just enjoy it. So. And did I hear that right, 24 times here? I run Houston 24 times, yeah. And what, what makes it such a great course? Uh, well, it's flat, for one thing, and usually they have cool weather for it most of the time, like today, it's a good day to run it. So it's a very, very excellent course. Runners come from all over to run it because it is a good course. All right, thank you so much, Mark, and, and thank you, Scott. I love what Star Hope does for our community. We're having a blast here at Mile 15. We're going to be checking in with all the athletes running out here, obviously, and uh, tracking everyone's progress. Back to you, Tom and Gina. Okay. Okay. I like in the women's races, she's leading those guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, she's looking good. She is looking good. Uh, we want to go now out to Pooja Lodia, who I believe is uh, at the split there on the course for us at Mandela and Bissonette. Pooja? That is true. We are at the split. This is really the moment of truth type place because this is where people can turn right if they are going to be completing a full marathon. They go straight if they're doing the half marathon. I have to tell you this morning, I've really only seen one person who kind of stood over here stretching saying, I still haven't decided which one I'm going to do. But again, a whole lot of excitement here. Real quickly, though, we got to talk to this officer because he's been talking to us a lot about this. You are dying to be out there yeah. with your running shoes.
is, I wish I was out there right what now. What is going through the minds of all of these runners? Because I know you have done many, many marathons in right your life. Right now, they're at a very happy point in about 10 miles. They'll be wishing <laughs> they weren't out here. This is a really good place. Everybody still has a lot of adrenaline working, and this is this is the place you want to be. Oh, we're seeing a whole lot of smiles, and I know you wish you could be out here. Thank you so much, sir, for being out here. And if you look, you can really see a lot of what he's talking about. We are seeing runners, big smiles on their faces, a lot of energy yet, because, again, we are right now between mile 7 and mile 8. We're also seeing... Quite a few spectators, and before I let you go, I do want to show you this sign because this one may be one of my favorite signs I've seen out here. Read your sign to us, ma'am. Pretend you're Sammy chasing squirrels. I take it this is the one and it only is. Sammy? This is Sammy, and that's her favorite pastime. <laughs> she she could be exhausted, but when she sees a squirrel, she, she finds that energy and she goes after it. Hey, we can all relate, and hey, we could all use a little bit of that squirrel energy. So thank you so much. Good luck to all of these runners. Let's send it back to you. Yeah, see, that's going to be me the next time I run, because I was just talking to Meb, and I said every time I see a marathon, I get inspired to do another one. I haven't done one in years. You don't compete competitively anymore, right? So do you want to do another marathon or are you done? You know, I've been very fortunate enough to do two marathons after I retired for charity. So I ran for the Martha Richard uh, Foundation in Boston, and I ran for Team for Kids for New York. And I still like to do active pacing people, whether sure. they want to break three hours or they want to run three and a half and things like that. And I would love to run one more for the Met Foundation as well. Why don't nice. you pace me nice. in the Rome Marathon? How would that be? <laughs> Rome Marathon. The Rome Marathon. I'm not, Marathon. I'm not Rome here, so it might be something. Okay. <laughs> Just bringing that up. John, how are we looking in the men's marathon? and the women's. Uh, the men's marathon, they're getting to the hilly part of our course. Hilly, I guess, for Houston isn't yeah. much. <laughs> but they're still, if this doesn't set them back too much, they, they could run under 207. They'll be right on the pace to, to set the record. Uh, Escala Marikai is just dominating right now. She She's holding, faded a little bit from that 220 pace. She's still projected to go 221. Wow. But she, wow. She's really cranking along. She's And she's come through mile 18, so she's on the 19th mile right now. And finally, she's got some help. She For a while, she's been leading the, the guys around her. Uh, her. Her rabbit, she passed him a long time ago, and she's been doing this solo for, from probably around the halfway point on. But this is a tremendously fast pace for her. So that's just another male runner that's that right. she's who's running very well. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. He's, he's running into 220, 222 type pace. And she, she's just cranking. We were talking with John earlier, Meb, about drafting and how much of an advantage or how little of an advantage, but it does give you an advantage getting behind somebody, at least to get out of that wind for a bit. Well, so look, and you can see the breeze going on a little bit, and the gentleman ahead of her, he's a good guy to have. You know, he's broad, he's tall, and <laughs> she can, you know, she, she's not tapped in yet, but he should, should just talk to him a couple words in English and say, hey, help me out, and stay behind him. It's going to help her tremendously. Yeah, he's, he's probably not thinking that he came into the race to be a, a, a great buffer, but that's what, <laughs> that's what he is for But, yeah, and on, on the men, you know, you're going to see, I'm surprised, like, he's looking back, you know, they're going to be able to just draft out of each other and, you know, save energy. What do you want to say, John? I can see no, you. For a while, the, I was earlier we were talking about how the winner of the Women's Half, Mia, was not sitting was sitting on the shoulder, not behind. The guys, until this moment, now they want to give an example, have been sitting right behind each other. But they're talking to each other. I'm not sure if they're trying to help each other or they're just looking to see how tired they are. Uh, uh, Bonza, who's leading this thing, who's on our right right now, he's he's a 209.04 runner. And this is this is two minutes faster for a marathon than he's ever run. And he's not new at this. He's run a whole bunch of marathons, even though he's really young. But uh, Kel Kelly's the, the 205, 205, 56, 206 runner. This is more in his wheelhouse. So it's a little bit more comfortable. So they do have those tennis shoes on, though, don't they? They do, <laughs> yes. Yeah, if you're, it, it's, they're runners that don't want to wear them that have to. You're like, I don't want to wear them, but I have to. I can't compete otherwise because it does make a huge difference. Well, I guess if you're sponsored by Nike, then it's kind of probably part yeah. of the uniform. But well, they don't, she looks, Escala looks really comfortable to me. Neither one of these guys look that comfortable to me. And they're not. I you would say the same. What do you think? Yeah. And you can see that they're exchanging leads. You know, there's a respect when you, you, you take a mile or half a mile and then somebody is supposed to help you because you don't want to be the only one take the lead. So they're looking at each other and they're like, they're struggling at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's the weather, whether it's the lactic acid, they, you know, you can see the grimness on him and uh, in the, uh, on, on the right. He's just going to be able to just challenge you and, you know, but at the same time, you don't want 
slow down to the other guys catch up to you. So right. you have to be able to, to maintain that lead. So at some point, this is sort of like they're pseudo teammates at this point to make sure they go one, two. Yep. And at some point, they're not going to be teammates because they both want to go one. <laughs> if possible. <laughs> if possible. You might find a case where one of them just starts sitting on the other and says, drag me through to the finish. Yeah. You know, one side is the one that is here. I think he wants to, he don't want to close the gap because, he, like he said, his time might be 209. Now he just wants to PR at the very least. Even if he gets second place, he wants to be able to be a run of PR. But at the same time, they're looking at each other and saying, you know what, you got to take the lead. You got to help me out. And, you know, nobody's going to take the lead for a mile or two unless you make a decisive move. And at this point in the race, when you're starting to get that fatigue or lactic acid, what are you thinking then? You just focus a mile on down the course and go, I got to make it the next mile and I got to make or or is it a mind game all the way? It's a mind game, as John alluded to. It's saying, I we can't we have to get one and two. Let's help each other get one and two at this point. You don't want to slow down and lo look for each other and say, hey, I, that third place or that fourth place is closing the gap because you're struggling, you're hurting me. You expect to be hurting, but at this point, it's just saying, how can I not close the gap from the third place, but how can I beat that guy? And I'm going to save my energy to be able to make a move at one point, decisive move. And, and you're gradually getting into the hilly portion. They're at Memorial Park say, right are now. They on the down or yeah, the up? That was on an <laughs> up, and then it'll go do, do a slight down all the way to where they go back uphill to Shepherd. So then the Shepherd, they end up doing the weird, what's really weird and unique to Houston, I think, is we don't really have hills, we have underpasses. Yeah. So <laughs> to go down and up is a lot more disconcerting than up than down, because you get, you're going down, you don't need to recover, then you go up. Whereas if you did the other way, you get to go up, then you get the recovery yeah. afterwards. So those two underpasses are, are a bit of a challenge. And the one is, uh, the, when you go into Montrose, it is a huge uphill. Yeah, they're trading and, and on how, the lead now. How far behind is the next woman runner in, in this uh, marathon? E e even, even if they're running PRs, they're way behind. It says, oh. says three-time champion Brooke Tide de Geppa is in a group of three or more a minute behind. A minute behind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thanks, and Tom. And right on cue. And, she, <laughs> and, she's a, and de Geppa is a 222. So she's, I mean, if she's on the pace, of, uh, holding pace that she's been running, low 221s, de Geppa would, will probably won't catch her. But there's always a Mebno. Just, there's always a chance that at any point, especially in the last six miles, she could completely fall apart. I mean, there, there's yeah. a gauging yeah. yourself. It's like, like a car race in a way. You're trying not to use all your gas early right. so you can finish the race, but you don't you want to use enough gas to stay away from it. Well, Meb, you said they're hurting. What, what's hurting? Your feet, your knees, or just your whole body? Is there a certain ache to it? Most of the time for me is the quads. The first okay. thing I give is the quads, and then you can see the uh, second place pl uh, runner right now. is His quads are bigger. You can see the definition yeah. one. He, that will allow you to bring more lactic acid. And he's making a move now to just say, you know what? We're going to play in this world of tag now, but I want to try see if I can separate and come in a comfort zone to be able to you know, bring it home. Mm -hmm. okay. Much more. The look, look, yeah, you're right. So we're going to take a short break. And, it, and it's uh, looking at the clock and saying, you know, I, I can hold on for another 30 seconds or 40 seconds. I'm going to be in it. I don't want to make him have a gap. If I could give him 10 yards or 15 yards, the game changed. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to take a short break and come back with more coverage of the Chevron Houston Marathon after this. I, I think I'm as ready as I can be. I'm ready, but clearly. There are so many expectations on the sticker, city mileage, that it's a lot to look up to, but I heard no gas gets better mileage than Chevron with Tefron. Yeah, no better mileage. It's proven, so that's a confidence builder. It's proven, no gas gets better mileage than Chevron with Tefron. Care for your car. <laughs> so much for my new car smell, though. We are Aramco Americas, creating business opportunities for our partners. Developing technology and sustainability breakthroughs in our lives. Searching for energy solutions. Working alongside the community on things that matter. All right, and good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Can you see them? Okay. Working to make a difference. We're proud to sponsor the We Are Houston 5K and the Banco Houston Half Marathon. You have to dig into it to find the motivation. What you got is good.
fast are you going now? carry Old Glory on the runs, there's people that'll say, thank you, I appreciate it. There's some that will stop and salute until I pass by. Honor Flag Runner is a name that I've given what I do. Carry and Old Glory is an opportunity to say thank you. It's about who is receiving it, not who's running it. My father was in the United States Air Force for 20 years. Later, I followed in his footsteps and enlisted in the Air Force myself. I don't know that he was ever honored for his service. The running thing was never an interest, but I did want to lose some weight. My brother had come down to Houston, and we all did a 10K together. It was my dad, my brother, my sister, and I. The next week, there was another half marathon. Initially, my dad was planning to participate in this half marathon with my sister and I, but he had back surgery and he was ordered not to try any physical activity. So our deal was that we will carry the flag and present it to you after the race. I don't know if I've ever saluted my dad before. <laughs> um, it, that was meaningful. And he still has that flag. Later I would run for my grandfather, who's passed away. He served in World War II. That's where the honor flag runner came from. It's my honor to run. I believe the count is, a, is approximately 60 flags have been issued. In some cases I might present the flag at the finish line. The most memorable event was a 72 hour run here in Cat Spring, Texas. For each 24 hour period, it was a different flag for a different Gold Star mom that I've met personally. Today we're honoring Master Sergeant Skip Ramsey. And he is a veteran of the Army National Guard where he was deployed to Vietnam. Today he's going to get the welcome home. Today he's going to get the pat on the back. He's going to get the salute he deserves. And I'm looking forward to visualizing what his reaction would be at 26.2. I use every opportunity to tell the story of who's being honored. I write the name, the date, and the event, branch of service or rank, the white part of the flag between the grommets, so that when I'm in the middle of a run, I can point to that and say, today we're honoring, and then I'll tell the story that I know. I will argue, when people say that must slow you down, I'll argue with them and say, but, but the encouragement lifts me. I would not perform as well without it. We're here at the finish line, and I'm with uh, Eyewitness News reporter Jessica Willie, who just finished her sixth half marathon here in Houston, 10th overall. How do you feel? I feel great, especially that I finished. Yay, I wasn't sure how this one would go. I do think I got a PR, but I didn't hit my goal. So I'm okay with all of that. I, I've talked a lot about it. Sorry, it's redundant to some people, but I'm just looking forward to Boston a few months from now. So. Awesome, that is awesome. A little breezy today. What did you think of the condition? Uh, a vicious headwind once we turn on to Montrose for the half marathon. I haven't looked at the full course. I don't know wh where they're going to get it. But vicious headwind on Montrose, and then also when you turn on to Allen Parkway, there are a lot of crosswind through the, tree, through the trees to the buildings. It was tough, but the weather, the temperature, of course, was amazing. And what was the crowd like? Always great. Always great. Houston has the best supporters um, almost the entire way, for sure, for the half. For the full, also a lot of supporters out there. And it really helps when you're struggling, especially when people start calling out your name. I mean, it helps tremendously. You still have a, a, a bundle of energy, so. <laughs> so I should go out. Yeah, go run another one? <laughs> no, thank you. I'll, I think I'll pass today. All right, go get some rest. Pizza. <laughs> right, there you go. Pizza. I love it. Go get them, Jessica. Thank you, guys. Pizza. Jessica looks great. Hey, good for her. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's running Boston if you didn't hear her in April, yeah. so this is like a warm up for her. But pizza and beer. It's the best <laughs> post race dinner, right? <laughs> Perfect. Did you could she talked about how windy it was in Allen Parkway. Yeah. That's what they're coming to the end of here. I find it interesting though is how far off the curb they are. They're actually adding distance to the race when they went around that long curve. There they finally got it when they made the sharp turn. But that's a sign of fatigue. You're not they're, thinking. They're, they're not You're thinking. Just not they're thinking. seeing that lane line, and they're following the lane line like they're a car versus cutting the tangent a little bit. 
But they're, 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 they're been on 206, 207 pace, and the last couple miles have been 503, 506, which is they need to be running still in the 450s, the high 440s to get a fast pace. So they're in that, that tough part right now. They're crossing the Shepherd Bridge, so they're about to make a left, and they're and then they're going to go where the our, our version of real hills, they're about to hit them. Well, they're hitting the hills and the winds all at the same yeah. time, as well as the fatigue. So Yeah, so this, this could tough. be... It'll be interesting to see if they hold this 505, 503 type pace, if they can pick it up at all. When the re course record was set, uh, he, he ran the last 10K like in 29.10, which is 440 pace. So so I don't think they're going to do that today. That was like the biggest shocker that day. So they're, they're, and they're sitting on each other again trying to get to the end. It do, it, and it, uh, from our shot here, you can't see anybody else in sight with them. No, they're way behind. And then the whole flip side, I mean, she's just, she's in Memorial Park now, so she hasn't gotten to the hills or the wind yet, so we'll see how she holds on. But she's been running in the 520s almost, I mean, 5 teens early on. Her last mile report was 527. I mean, she's still cranking along really, really good. Well, this is a great okay. race here, and hopefully we will beat the record, which is uh, 206.50 in the men's and uh, 214.04 in the women's. No, no, no. 224, <laughs> I'm sorry. That would be a fast no, race, wouldn't it? That's the world, the world record yeah, is 214. Yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah, 223.14 is the, is the record for the women. And and it sounds like, uh, from the feedback we've gotten, not only is she on pace to break that record, it sounds like DeGuff De and maybe some others are on that pace to break that record. But again, I think it all changes when you hit that wind in the hills. Well, as she's going through Memorial Park, we're reminded that the Houston Marathon Foundation supports running as part of the uh, development of a healthy lifestyle. Take a look. Good job. That's it. Good job. With every lap around the track, these students at Sharpstown High are learning the power of perseverance. You know, we get a lot of feedback from the teachers saying that this after-school running program is doing wonders for their kids. Good job, Bernie. These young runners yeah. are part of the Houston Marathon Foundation's uh, We Run Houston program. Uh, many of our students have come from uh, pretty rough backgrounds. They've had uh, difficulty getting to where they are, and, uh, and this is great for them. It builds up their confidence, and it helps them realize that there's a place for them here. Through the four-month program, students train for the We Run Houston 5K, or the Aramco Houston Half Marathon. Running means a lot to me, you know, putting me in shape. You know, I've got two kids that this is going to be their fourth half marathon and when they first started they were like man am i gonna finish it's a good workout now they're thinking am i gonna beat last year's time the program also gives sharpstown students the resources they need to suit up and run like athletic gear we're here today to distribute shoes that were donated by brooks and we're so happy to partner with sharpstown high school and have these kids train and learn the joys of running all part of an effort to help these young runners learn to keep pushing forward i like to encourage my teammates as well so like i, I won't give up they won't give up i'd like to say to the houston marathon foundation thank you it is good for our kids and ultimately it's good for houston coverage of the chevron houston marathon is sponsored by the houston marathon committee registration for the 2021 race opens today at 4 p.m I, I think I'm as ready as I can be. I'm ready, but clearly I'm a little nervous. There are so many expectations, like on the sticker, city mileage this, highway that. That's a lot to live up to, but I heard no gas gets better mileage than Chevron with Techron. Yeah, no better mileage. It's proven. So that's a confidence builder. It's proven no gas gets better mileage than Chevron with Techron. Care for your car. <laughs> so much for my new car smell, guys. We are Aramco Americas, creating business opportunities for our partners, developing technology and sustainability breakthroughs in our labs, searching for energy solutions, working alongside the community on things that matter. We are professionals and neighbors, working to make a difference. We're proud to sponsor the We Are Houston 5K and the Aramco Houston Half Marathon. Just get up and go. Just That's do it. it. Anything is possible. Sign up now. Sign up, Sign up now. now. 2021 Chevron Houston Marathon registration opens today at 4 p.m. You know what? It starts with one mile. Put one foot in front of the other. Register now to secure the lowest available price. Visit ChevronHoustonMarathon.com. Sign up, guys. 
You have to dig deep to find the motivation to change. Change is hard. Change takes time. Change demands sacrifice. ViewSport's sweat-activated technology was developed to motivate you to go that extra mile, to hustle harder, to visibly show your work so you can push further. Performance apparel designed to show the making of a champion. ViewSport. Motivation. twin sons who were born 10 weeks premature. I'm running for Texas Children's Hospital in honor of my sons and for all the children at Texas Children's Hospital. I went in for my checkup at Texas Children's Hospital, the Women's Pavilion, and they told me during the checkup that I was already in labor. That was at 29 weeks. So it was a complete shock. They tried to stop the labor and it lasted about five days before the babies decided they were coming. The entire experience was terrifying. Hayden, when Hayden came out, he was over five pounds. So I was just so thankful that he was a good size. When they took Holden out, and they said he's three pounds. Because he didn't get enough nutrients, he was just very, very small and had to spend a lot of time working on his breathing. He was fed through a feeding tube, he jaundice, had to have a blood transfusion. Hayden, his bigger brother, um, quickly lost the weight. He had necrotizing enterocolitis when he was 11 days old. I think it's like the second leading cause of, of uh, mortality in premature babies. That is the death of the intestines, where the intestines just start to die. They did tell us that if he was going to pass, it would be within the next 24 to 48 hours. I kind of went a little crazy with the idea of losing my son at only 11 days old. They were in the NICU about six weeks. They received amazing care at Texas Children's. If we had been at any other hospital, my true belief is that Hayden wouldn't be here today. Without them, I, I, uh, I, you know, I can't imagine what life would be like. When we finally got to take the boys home, we were able to, to put them in the car on the same day and bring them home together. This year, I'm raising money for Texas Children's Hospital. I can never repay them for everything that they did, but it is something that I can do. So I work at Bechtel. My coworkers knew about the, the situation I had with my boys, so um, a couple friends and myself decided to start a running team and run, to run in honor of Texas Children's. And once word got out, the support from all of my colleagues was amazing. And now we are 85 members and we are now the largest corporate team for the marathon. Everyone raising money for Texas Children's Hospital, I wanna help them any way that I can. They saved my son's life, I believe. So many reasons to run, and that's just one of those many, many reasons people choose here today, helping others in need, and certainly with medical situations like that. Now we're looking Stunning over shot. Alan Parkway from our drone. Look at this, and we have just had a big, big move. We have Kellum Neff, who is uh, the last man starting now, about to come past the finish line here in the half marathon. There, there he is. Yeah, there he is. And He's for happy. Those, <laughs> for those of you that haven't heard, he was the last man starting the race today, the guy way at the back of the pass, pack, I should say. And for every person he passed in the half marathon, people donated money. So we yeah. raised a lot of money there. That's Callum Neff, and he's going to join us up here on the set coming up. And we hope he joined thousands, past thousands and thousands of people. Well, he's a fast guy. He probably did. He is, yeah. He's a fast guy. As we just said, there was a big move made in the men's marathon. We had the leader, Kel Kelly Gazahin of Ethiopia, who just took it away from the second place runner, he, he John. He keeps looking yes. back. They were together for a long while. They're, they're together for a long time. They got to the hill bits and ran what were for these guys are really slow miles a 5 531 and 526 and that's when Cal Kelly made the big move um, but like Mev and I were talking about the uh, Bonza who's in second he may not end up second he's I mean Cal Kelly's going one direction Bonza's going the other and if he if he runs 530s 540s in there's got to be somebody back out there that can catch him so you were looking at him saying he just like he looks like he's struggling yeah, we, when we looked at him earlier, really, Bonza's face looked a lot less comfortable. Neither one looked great, but Bonza looked a little bit less great, if you will. Now, on the women's side, she's she looks like a million dollars. Yeah. She's just incredible. She just threw it on the 22nd mile. She ran 532. She, she we don't have her up on the main screen right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, but the, yeah. The, the, the women's side, she is doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job. 
She's been running most of this alone. She's had a little bit of help from the uh, regular excellent uh, runners, 220, 222 guys, and she's leaving them behind. This pace is, is uh, this is going to be one of the great runs. I mean, it's going to be maybe the best uh, record set here. It's better than the 206 even. That's phenomenal. We started the day with the idea of breaking four records. I want to point out, they're all four great records. They're not easy to break. I mean, and you can see how great a day it is by the depth of the field, especially in that half marathon, how great everyone was able to run, given, but they couldn't get under that 59.22 because it is so good. So yeah. was that official? We found out Jamel Yemmer did not break Oh, I don't know the official. I'm sorry. I don't okay. know that. We do know, though, that the father and uh, son from, from UK were trying to set a record, and they were able to. The they did it by over five just. minutes, I think. <laughs> <laughs> they, they crushed it. It was amazing. Yes. I mean, I thought the, the 62.57 by, by Andrew, I mean, by Matt, the younger one, is pretty impressive. 71.10 by the 55-year-old father. I can't even, I don't know. Here's for the 50-year-old. Yeah, that, that, that's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's an amazing run, amazing record to set. Yeah. So that's the world record for a father and son running together in a half marathon. Right. That's awesome. right. Wow. Who okay. comes up that's with those records, though? <laughs> I don't know. It's like a baseball statistic, isn't it? <laughs> and Bob now has Callum Neff. Bob? Yeah, Callum Neff is with us. Last runner starting. Cal, how many people did you pass? Well, my goal was 10,000. I think I got pretty close to that today. <laughs> that is yeah, awesome. A lot of people. Tell us again what, what you were running for. Yeah, so today I was selected by the Houston Marathon Foundation as a local elite to represent the foundation and uh, put up pledges for every person I passed. So I started dead last, let everybody go. It was great cheering everybody on at the start line. It was, very, it was strange for me because I'm normally right at the front, but uh, it was great cheering everybody on, and then I started last and uh, weaved and bobbed my way through. I bet people were cheering for you, too, as you came through. Yeah, <laughs> it was a really good build-up, so I had lots of support out there. They knew that it was for a good cause when I passed them, fortunately. Awesome yeah. stuff. Hey, congratulations. Yeah, thank Good you so stuff much. today, man. Tom, Gina. hey, Bob, he's going to join us on the finish line, 10.35 tonight. That is our wrap-up show, and we're going to show you your friends and relatives and neighbors and all the elites, so Callum Neff will be there as well tonight. I hope you'll join me tonight after our news at 10.35 for the finish line, and John will be there yeah. as well. You can see how excited he was. <laughs> we have kind of now uh, narrowed it down to, and then they were two. Yeah, <laughs> there were two. And, yeah. and the big difference is, I mean, he, he pulled away, uh, Kel Kelly pulled away from Bonza running another 526 mile. So it's like, it's more, not even one went forward, one maintained, the other one really kind of died. Uh -huh. But at the same time, you got on the women's side, she is, she's not showing any signs of fatigue. She's still running in the five, uh, 520s, low 530s, which is super fast. I mean, it's an incredible time. So the, where the wind and the hills seem to affect the guys, nothing seems to affect her. Okay, she but is she, is she in the hills? Is she yes, in the yes. Okay. Uh, she's crossing well, a, a little bit from, the, uh -huh. from Memorial, the up it. and down a little bit. She's about to make the left onto, onto uh, Allen Parkway. So she's about to hit the heavy hills now. Okay. I mean, almost, the, you make this turn and it's flat, then it goes up. So no. the record 20650, Kel Kelly Gazai of Ethiopia, not going to make that today, no, probably? She, okay. They, it, they may be in the 209s today. Okay. And these 526, 5, 530s for, for a male is not, not going to. They're, it's not what he's normally used to run. I love seeing the other runners alongside them on the screen. You can see him running, and you can see you can see he's passing. the regular folk, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and and appreciate more easily how quickly he's running compared to. It's a good feeling, Meb. Right? You I see that finish line, it. you go, "Oh, here it is." Thank you, God. No, no. Yeah, it is. A, it's, a, it's a moment that everybody, as a lead elite, elite athlete or the runner, average runner, just because you go and by each other, you inspire each other, you encourage each other. Look at how yeah, they're cheering. They're cheering so it's, it's, yeah. it's a contagious. Uh, the, the cheering and the momentum, and you know, it's, it's, it's the, that's the unique part of it. Out on back course, or kind of seeing the early runners go by. Okay, okay. for Kel Kelly, mile 23 was 526, mile 24 was 526, mile 25 was 457. Wow! He got out of the hills, he got out of the wind, yeah. and he got a little bit excited. <laughs> he dropped a foot, <laughs> so he, he'll, he, he's, it's going to be in the two, 208s, maybe better. And then if he keeps this up, well, he looks like he's kicking it a little bit now. He looks like yeah. he does have some gas left. Yes, and, and then some of it might be what you were just saying. These folks next to you are cheering like crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean they're, 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 they're going hard, and they're cheering everybody on beside them. It's kind of a, a very unique thing in sport. Well, I want to honor for them to get a chance to, to run alongside him and be able to cheer him on. But he should be, what is he at? He should only be a couple minutes away from the, from the finish. Yeah. Well, you see a great shot on the ground there as he approaches the finish line. Again, the record here in the course, 206.50, and we're now at, well, 206.30. Yeah. And then there's yeah. always one who comes into the wrong lane. There he got back over. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
once they see him pass, you know, it's kind of like a, a little late there cheering on because, you know, they, he's come from behind. All of a sudden, as he passes them, and it's like, oh, they get excited. You're going to see him to cheer and give him thumbs up or making noises. Okay, and is that still the number two finisher? Is that who was racing it before? Can yeah, you see yeah. John? It, it, lo it looks like it's Bonza as well. Still back there. Yeah, but as you know, the camera is tricky. It makes it look a lot closer than it really yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. All right, this is our leader right now, and we expect the man who's going to win this race in just about another minute or so, Kelkeli Gazahin of Ethiopia. And you can see the others catching Bonza barely in the back and some other runners coming on the screen. Right. Yeah. And he going through his mind this now. Is, is this is for what kind of a prize as well as, fam as, well as family honor? $45,000. That's what's going through his mind. Here comes my check. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope I'd be and running family for that. Honor. And family honor. That's true. That's true. That's true. He's bragging rights. Yeah. <laughs> now he's running good. There goes a 20, 400 meters left. So he's at the 26 mile mark, right? The banner right there. So he has 400 meters left. So does it get easier right now? It does because the crowd next to you. Because of the security on the support you. Now he knows exactly that the uh, runner up is uh, clear away from him. It's a celebration. Yeah. You'll see I'm give him another 30 seconds if you start doing this. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. And, and, and we're getting a little spoiled over recent years about how fa people run 201s and yeah. unofficially under two. 208, which I think he's going he's gonna to finish within the next minute, I believe. 208, 209 is a great marathon time. Hey, for, as an example, Matt, what's your PR in the marathon? 208, 30, 208 37. Which one? 208, 37 in Boston. And he's one of the best marathoners of all time, <laughs> especially when you look at his Olympic medals. I mean, that's yeah. the idea of where yeah. he's done. That's how good this is. Here comes <laughs> he is kicking it at the end. Yeah. Kelly Gazahin of Ethiopia <laughs> hitting the tape. <laughs> yeah. He just about, he just, uh, right under your time. <laughs> just under time. You got to do it, you know. <laughs> you. <laughs> right under. The way, the way he looked, he will tell us how windy and, and yeah. hilly yeah. it was at the end. That was, that was some yeah. work. He did not cruise that in yeah. at all. I mean, he was going fast, but he looked like it was it was definitely a huge effort on yeah. his part. I don't know how you do it, Meb. He's out there, and we saw him at mile 20. He looked like he was struggling, and then he's yeah. kicking it at the end. The end. As you said, it's a mental game, right? A mental game, and, and you know, I saw the mayor there, kind of almost greeting him. It says, it says a lot for the mayor to be able to be there and to be at the finish line, you know, for the sport and for the city. So it's great. Yeah, we're gonna hear from him in just a couple of minutes. Bob Slovak's at the finish line, been interviewing our winners all morning long, and we're still waiting for the second place finisher. Looks and like here he is. Comes. Yeah. But there's a bike behind him. You can see the guy behind him. Oh, uh, yeah, coming fast. I don't know fast. how far it is, behind him is he knows he's, he's, he's looking look back. So. Yeah. <laughs> and he, this is where he's like, I don't know if I can go faster. Because he's already struggling. He picks it up. And, and you'll see this happen in every marathon in the masses. Cramp. You've had to have it. Just your hamstring goes. Your calf yeah. goes. Yeah. So, like, I need to make it, but I, I can't. There's like a governor on your body. It's make, keeping him from sprinting, even if he could sprint at all. Yeah, but and you could see. I don't so know how far the guy is behind, no, no. but you could see and he was running faster. He's got a full minute, minute and a half cushion on the second place finisher. Is that how it is? Okay. Oh, yeah. And he did all that in the last, like, four miles. Three miles he put all that on. So, But Bonzo Dita might not be breaking six minutes right now. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's really <laughs> When he hit the off. wall, there's that wall. It's uh, hard to break it through, you know. It's, uh, yeah, he, he, as they say, he, he kind of maybe got a little bit too excited. When you're a 209 guy, you try to be running 206 pace for most of the day. He's you know, asking a lot. We haven't even talked about the wall today. What is that like, hitting the wall? People, you know, it, it's figurative, but what's it feel like? Like <laughs> running into a mental wall, a physical? Physical and bone wall. Look at his arms. His arms are not even moving, no. you know, because just usually like a nice cadence to be able to propel you forward, but it's just, I'm glad I'm done. Is what he's thinking. Yeah. You know, I'm glad I'm done. That was rough. I don't blame you. Rough. You've hit the wall during a race? I have done, and I did it my first one, and uh, it made me say never again, because it just, and I done it again in 2013 New York. It just, your mind says go, your body says no. What, you just... Something happens. It just, just you, you run out you of. You run out of fuel. You run out of fuel. And wow. And especially they like a cold day like this. It makes it a lot more harder. That was a good, good finish right there for uh, third and fourth, I think. <coughs> close. And, and now on your left of the screen, Ascali Marachi of uh, Ethiopia as well. She is the she's lead runner here in the that women's milk marathon. Strong too. It looks like. She looks like she is just like she started the race. 
And we she's, don't see anybody close behind yeah, her at all, John. Yeah, she even faded back in these hills. She went from five, she went from running like you know I said 527, 533. The hills and she's run 536 and 540. She's not dying much at all. Oh, I was like that's she yeah, looks that's really really good. That's still strong. We've got a race for fourth. Well, we got, is that for third? And for fourth? third, I mean. Third yeah. and fourth. Through. Oh. <laughs> oh, we just missed it. That. <laughs> 211.30 is a PR, but 211.30 is what Scullion was shooting for to make the Olympic A standard. Oh, for and he just, he, he just, he just he missed it. Just seconds away from just it. Seconds away. So when you say the Olympic standard, what do you mean? In the Olympics, they, they're actually con making it really confusing this year over <laughs> past years. In the past, you just had to hit a time standard, and you qualified for a track event or the marathon. Now they do a thing where they're about half the field will come by a time standard, and half of it comes from what we were talking earlier about the gold label marathons, accruing points at certain races, and they build it up, uh, build up points so they select a better field as the goal. But it's a little more complicated to say. But the A standard, the, the Olympic standard, is 211.30. If you run under that, your country you can select you and you qualify. If you haven't run under that and you haven't done the other part, you don't get to go. So All right, we will be back with so much more. We've got another 45 minutes or so of the Chevron Houston Marathon and the Aramco Half Marathon live coverage continues after this short break. Door running, always have, always will. I've done 20 Houston marathons and I've run 75 marathons overall. So this medal is definitely going to mean a little more to me because I have the backing of Houston behind me and particularly the marathon committee for trusting me to do something for them that they would love. I think I thought Houston was not attainable. When they called me, Immediately, images pop in my head. So the painting that I did is called You're Almost There. I painted it big because I want people to feel like they can walk into it or run into it or, or hobble into it or whatever you're doing at that point when you're five or six miles out. You can kind of see the finish line, but not really. And then I also put a dog in it, of course, who has his hand outstretched like you're supposed to, but like flat with the cup here so people can run and grab. And so he's there waiting for you with his nice big cup of water to help you get back in. Every artist wants to evoke emotions. And for me, I want to make people feel good. The coolest part is that my love of running and my love of art are just together as one. I run because it's where I get my best creative ideas. Runners depend on the weather forecast because getting caught in the rain is no fun. That's why I depend on the ABC 13 Houston app for hour-by-hour -hour weather forecasts. It's convenient, it helps me plan my day and my training. I'm not lacing up without checking it first. I, I think I'm as ready as I can be. I'm ready, but clearly I'm a little nervous. There are so many expectations, like on the sticker, city mileage this, highway that. That's a lot to live up to, but I heard no gas gets better mileage than Chevron with Techron. Yeah, no better mileage. It's proven, so that's a confidence builder. It's proven, no gas gets better mileage than Chevron with Techron. Care for your car. <laughs> So much for my new car smell, guys. We are Aramco Americas, creating business opportunities for our partners, developing technology and sustainability breakthroughs in our labs, searching for energy solutions, working alongside the community on things that matter. We are professionals and neighbors, working to make a difference. We're proud to sponsor the We Are Houston 5K and the Aramco Houston Half Marathon. Just get up and go. Just That's do it. it. Anything is possible. Sign up now. Sign up, Sign up now. now. 2021 Chevron Houston Marathon registration opens today at 4 p.m. You know what? It starts with one mile. Put one foot in front of the other. Register now to secure the lowest available price. Visit ChevronHoustonMarathon.com. Sign up.
Chevron awarded three local charity organizations $25,000 each as part of this year's Chevron Houston Marathon Run for a Reason Charity Challenge. The challenge gives Run for a Reason charities the chance to compete for additional funding. This year's charity winners are Friends for Life, Houston Area Parkinson Society, and Can Care. On Friday, Chevron presented each winner with a $25,000 check. Congratulations to all of them. Welcome back to the finish line. I'm here with the Chevron Houston Marathon winner, Kakili Gazai of Ethiopia. His 14th marathon win, first time running here in Houston. He wins his first time here in Houston. How was the finish? He was able to pull away from his competitors. <laughs> So he was on the pace, he was on the pace, after the pace exit, he was on the pace, he was on the pace, after the pace exit, he doubled the pace, and then that's how he finished it. Doubled the pace? Doubled the pace. Wow. Yeah. Obviously, he enjoyed running here in Houston. What was the crowd like for him? And now, his boot, the gap, and the gap, and the gap. Uh, he said that the cheering, the support is really, it energizes, it helps us. And then the air was really cold, it was, but uh, the cheer was great, he said. It's safe to say he'll be back in Houston and run again? his place, it's pressure to come back. He want to run if he get chance. He want to. Awesome. He wins $45,000 in one really sweet Stetson hat, the folks from Chevron. On behalf of Chevron people, congratulations on your win. I'm so excited and I thank you so much for the prize. First cowboy hat? Go ahead and put it on. <laughs> Congratulations. Say thank you. You have to put it on. <laughs> there you have it. Your Chevron Houston Marathon win. We always love the money shot with the cowboy hat on, right? That's true. Welcome, cowboy. Oh, there it is. That was like me the first time I tried the cowboy hat. I turned it around. Tommy got it on sideways. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on the left, uh, that is our leader in the women's marathon, and she is looking really yeah. good, John. Well, she's starting to look a little more, more like uh, Bonza did, the second-place finisher. She just ran a 556 mile, oh, okay. which is so she's way off down. what okay. she's, she's been doing, and she's yeah. looking at her watch now. Hopefully, she can, if she can get it together and run it, uh, it's going to be under 530 to get the course record. And that's a six-minute marathon a mile really throws you off. I mean, it's 30 seconds. Yeah. For, by a mile. It's a tough day. It's a tougher finish. She doesn't look near as clean as she looked before. The arms are going, yeah. Oh, I you see. You got the side to side motion oh, going on with the arms. Yeah, yep. Meb is just demonstrating <laughs> that here. This is a boxer form right the now. Boxer form. Form. <laughs> yeah, I heard it, you, know? you, yeah. just, you just mentioned it, though, um, and Kelly Gazahan, the men's winner, just said the same thing you said before. He was energized by that cheering. The people, as he went past, went, go, go, go. That really does that much for you. Oh, absolutely. I think the crowd always energizes you and it gives you the energy that is needed, you know, especially in the, when you go and pass them or you, they cheer your name, come on, you can do it, or you're almost there. And I, I love getting the crowd. The crowd, the, that's the beauty of distance running and marathon, to be able to just be that much of far away, which is touching distance and screaming names or telling you, good job, you're almost there, you can do it, or sometimes they even give you a gap. You are 30 seconds ahead of that person and all that just encourage you. Yeah, the intimacy there of the, of the crowd right yeah. there with, alongside you. And it's really you. cool that it's not just crowd on the side, that they're in the race. Like, yeah. they're cheering you on because they're kind of going in a different way. They're going through a similar thing. Absolutely. So they're, they're amazing to watch someone, especially as good as Mev, go by. It's like, that's incredible, and they get excited about yeah. that as well. So I, ho I hope she can get as excited as um, Doug Kelly did and finish you know, 30 seconds faster he's been running that she's got a pretty good shot at it. And I'm still looking at no one in the shot behind her at all. <laughs> no, and they still run it pretty well. Even when we're showing you know, outside of Chicago, it. this is, you know, year after year, one of the best time-wise marathons there is in, in this country. Uh, Boston as well. Boston's a downhill course. Oh! Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he had to cross then. 
he made he made it a crowd, but he didn't need to be as late. Yeah. That, that was dangerous. That was yeah. uh, dangerous, dangerous. Very dangerous. Because you know there's a big gap behind her. Look, there's still people coming. Yeah. Well, there's somebody coming. That's a guy. That's a male that's a runner. Guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's a male <laughs> runner. <laughs> <laughs> trying to. So I maybe she's thinking at this point, well, let so me not let that guy catch me. That finish line we'll cannot come soon thing. enough for her right now. Well, she went out okay. really, yeah. really fast. I mean, her first part, I mean, she, there's no question, both the men's field and this field, they, they thought today was going to be a record-type day. They got the, the Pacers to do it. The Pacers pulled them through at good paces, re really went after it. And, and sometimes if you go out too fast, it makes it, you, you, as an overall pack, you end up struggling a little bit. And that's what we're seeing, I think, from the overall pack. You didn't expect Brooke Tight to get to be that far behind, what did is you? This, what is that guy doing? <laughs> he's, you know, he's, guy, he's giving her guidance where to go. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, got yeah, run yeah. over. He's, he's trying to stay in the sand. Just stay to the cone because the wheelchair is coming, so. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You didn't expect the rest of the women to be that far behind, though, did you? Oh, not at all. I thought, well, actually, what I thought is the Geffa was the one who'd run 222 thought, yeah, if possible. And we're I used to seeing the Geffa at the front of the pack. Right, and sure. I figured either, either Escala, there's only a couple women I thought could even contend with their Shuko Wodo and Escala Merca. Her PR prior to this is 224.13 from LA back in April of last year. So she's going to, I think no matter what, she's going to, I think she's going to have a personal best. I think she's going to make this turn in a second. I don't think she's that far away from mm -hmm. us at this point. And do we know where in the men's race, El Abasi from Bahrain finished? He was one of the fastest, actually fastest Bahrainian runner ever. Uh, I didn't see him come in. It'll okay. be interesting. He ran the half year last year and right. didn't, didn't run great Very well. for him. I mean, it's still 62 minutes, but for someone of his caliber, that was a little bit off. He isn't, not, he's probably Meb's age. <laughs> no, he's a little bit, uh, he's 35 or 36 years old. He's kind of in that bubble area of being at the end of his career. Unless you're Meb and you go on three or four more years after that. <laughs> but normally that's kind of the end of it. There she is. There she is. She's Azkali of Ethiopia in 223.30, it looked like. Right. That's just off what uh, uh, the Geffa ran last year. So that'll be the, the third or fourth best time ever run in Houston. So she faded a little bit and still ran a tremendous time. Now let's see if there's anybody else. In oh, there's someone coming in here. You can see on the camera. Oh, yeah, there we are. There we go. Yeah, behind the guy so in white. So th we see a runner. Oh, there's yeah. another one in front. Is that the Geffa? That's yeah, the Geffa. That's the Geffa. Yeah, I recognize her that's cool. silhouette. So yeah, she would have just missed the Houston record by about 30 seconds, right? Yeah. Not even. Two twenty. Er, the Houston record, 223. She looks good. 14 was the Houston, old Houston record, right? Right, so she's only off by like 16 seconds. It all, it's that one mile that really did her in. And this is a really good run by DeGuffa. This is her seventh time to run here. And now she's finished first three times, second twice, uh, third and fourth. Wow. So that's good. That's Had good. she won today, she'd have been the first ever to win four times here in Houston. Yeah. I think she played a little safe. You know, it looked like she looked, her phone was <coughs> really good and strong at the end. You know, uh, didn't break it down. So I think she played a little bit too safe, I think. Yes, yeah, because her form looks good. Yeah. This is this is an outstanding performance, though. To be, under, to be a 224 and right. be second. You're just a minute off the record so, time here. So that gives her like now seven of the best 20 times ever run in the marathon and probably five of the top 10. And now no one else is in sight. <laughs> so there's, there's another one. I think third place should be closing right by ha behind her, I think. Meb, when you're done running that marathon and you get past that finish line, what are some of the first things you do in terms of your physical improvement immediately? First, smile. You know? Oh, okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really hard if you can't, that is. Yeah. But, and then, you know, just celebrate. And uh, for me, I have a, a you can drink that right away to help me recover. Okay. It's a, the first thing I bring is a shake uh, with a 10 ounce of water and a, a packet. is a, a you can. And then after that, just a lot of media and a lot of drug testing. So, Oh, really? Try to enjoy that and greet your family just because, you know, you want to be able to t tell them thank you for all the support they've given you. And eventually, it's a little stretching if you can. Because yeah. it's, it's very rigid. I have never been 80-year-old, but I've seen 80-year-old <laughs> men and women walking around and doing some room to struggle. And that's what it is. After the we have like an 83-year-old running today in the marathon. The wow. oldest, that's 83. That's great. That's amazing. <laughs> so you keep moving after the race. You don't want those muscles to tighten up. You want to keep moving if you can. But then sometimes, like New York, my last marathon, I just didn't have anything left to collapse. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> so was it. They have to carry you out through, oh. but if you can walk around, it's better. Yeah. 
get get high, you know, high chocolate or tea or coffee, something really warms into your system. Also. We see some runners come across the finish and line and throw up. There's somebody in a uh, suit. Which is just kind of, <laughs> <Yeah. okay. laughs> come on now. <laughs> I think the half marathon in a suit. No, he did. <laughs> I hope he won a bet. Either that or he's with the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> or he got in around the corner that and just could walked be. through. <laughs> that could be. Yeah. We, we still haven't seen third place, I don't believe. In the women's race? I thought no. I saw, yeah, I thought I saw a woman in blue. I did see Was it 10, 15 seconds? I think there was yeah, a woman. Yeah, right, right behind, behind together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's right then behind So we haven't together. seen fourth place. No, fourth place. Oh, that might be fourth yeah. place I don't, right I don't think she, I think she's in the wrong, wrong lane. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the pants are kind of the, the giveaway. Pants okay. giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> that looks like the pants Gina Gaston would wear for a run. <laughs> Always fashionable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was, she was going to take them off, but she probably decided it's too cold to keep them off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and we want to remind you the clothes that were shed today are being donated to the Star of Hope shelter. So uh, you don't have to worry about all, the, all of those who decided to, to part with stuff that it won't get to a good home. It's a beautiful feeling getting to that finish line. It is. <laughs> yeah. It is. I remember that. It's yeah. been a while, but yeah. it's <laughs> so much fun running the race. Yeah. And I was inspired to run a marathon. Back when I first came to Houston, I was covering the Houston Marathon. Mm -hmm. Can't remember what the name of it was back then, but <laughs> it was still the Houston Marathon. I don't remember the sponsor. But I went down here and covered it in 1983 and said, I got to run this race. That's awesome. That's I awesome. I'd never run farther than five miles in my life, but I thought I got to have <laughs> that, that 26 miles under my belt. And that was when they just ran up Memorial, down Memorial, up Memorial, down down the <laughs> Something <laughs> like that, yes. It was a very yes. dull course. Yes. This, ch this course has changed several times. Well, but listen. This one's been one we've had for a while. 1972, it was a five-mile loop in Memorial Park, so you went around it five and a quarter times or so, and it was 113 people back then, and they ate beef stew, I think, after and had a party. That was yeah. about it. But that's a that's a tough run, a five-mile loop. things have changed. Th that's <laughs> what they moved to for the Olympic trials, though, because these guys, you're not paying attention to the scenery or the nice parts when you're up running as fast okay. as, say, these guys ran today. The trials this year is going to be a three-loop course, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah they're going to have a three-loop and a little add-on yeah. at the end yeah. to try to, it makes a, when we hosted here in 2012, it just went around Allen Parkway, they made it as flat as can be. They didn't do the underpasses, okay. and it was great for watching. I mean, it was, you could just go back and forth across those bridges it was just a wonderful set of criterion course okay well marathon Meb, we have been so privileged to have you here again Meb Kesleski, one of the most decorated runners in u.s history as i said the only guy to win boston new york in 2014 boston 2014, yeah. and then be an olympian the olympian a silver medalist in 2004 we appreciate it your insight and your energy and all of that thanks it's always Thank great so to see you every year great to be with you guys here again come and join us again next year i would love to okay uh, Meb Kesleski, right. everybody thanks let's take it to the okay. west side uh, out there around Tanglewood Courtney Fisher is out there with the runners still coming yes. across at Chimney Rock and Woodway yeah that's right guys we've been talking with fans and runners as well can I grab you really quickly because I love this side Humpty Dumpty had wall issues too we are at mile marker 17 you know this is your side right yes Tell me, you're here to support a friend yes hoping she doesn't hit a wall right you she's trying to qualify for Boston that's amazing you've run marathons yourself before so what's so hard about mile 17 um you start to feel the fatigue and it really gets hard and closer to 20 so yeah. we thought this was a good point to give her some encouragement. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. I know you're moving on to the next one, but guys, this is why mile 17 is so hard. Runners hit that wall. Tom <coughs> Cook, I know you've seen that, I'm sure, with your many marathons in your past. That is why it is so important to be out here cheering on these runners, these athletes, as they kind of get into that home stretch. We also know our colleague, ABC 13, Chaz Miller, he is closing in on us, which is awesome. We talked with him earlier if you were watching our coverage he's raising money for cystic fibrosis and hopefully we'll check in with him here shortly as well but everyone picking up the pace not hitting a wall here on this gorgeous day we'll send it back to you all right thank you courtney we'll be back with much more at the 48th running of the chevron houston marathon and we'll talk to steve green from chevron right after this break <laughs> Coverage of the Chevron Houston Marathon is sponsored by the Houston Marathon Committee. Registration for the 2021 race opens today at 4 p.m. I, I think I'm as ready as I can be. I'm ready, but clearly I'm a little nervous. There are so many expectations, like 
on this sticker, city mileage this, highway that. That's a lot to live up to, but I heard no gas gets better mileage than Chevron with Tecron. Yeah, no better mileage. It's proven. So that's a confidence builder. It's proven no gas gets better mileage than Chevron with Tecron. Care for your car. <laughs> so much for my new car smell, guys. Place up. Just get up and go. Just That's do it. it. Anything is possible. Sign up now. Sign up, Sign up now. now. 2021 Chevron Houston Marathon registration opens today at 4 p.m. You know what? It starts with one mile. Put one foot in front of the other. Register now to secure the lowest available price. Visit ChevronHoustonMarathon.com. Sign up, up, guys. You have to dig deep to find the motivation to change. Change is hard. Change takes time. Change demands sacrifice. ViewSport's sweat-activated technology was developed to motivate you to go that extra mile, to hustle harder, to visibly show your work so you can push further. Performance apparel designed to show the making of a champion. ViewSport. Motivation revealed. I think I'm as ready as I can be. I'm ready, but clearly I'm a little nervous. There are so many expectations, like on the sticker, city mileage this, highway that. That's a lot to live up to, but I heard no gas gets better mileage than Chevron with Tecron. Yeah, no better mileage. It's proven. So that's a confidence builder. It's proven no gas gets better mileage than Chevron with Tecron. Care for your car. <laughs> so much for my new car smell, guys. The Chevron Houston Marathon, Aramco Houston Half Marathon, and We Are Houston 5K has been sponsored by Chevron and Aramco. The Chevron Houston Marathon is an incredible event. Chevron has been the title sponsor for 15 years. It's an important economic driver for the city, and we have runners from all over the world. And we have thousands of volunteers. We have about 8,000 employees in the Houston area, and I can tell you that they care deeply about this city. They contribute thousands of volunteer hours to more than 100 nonprofit organizations that address the building blocks of strong communities, things like basic human needs, education, and economic development. We have a campaign every fall. It's called Chevron Humankind. Our employees support the community by volunteering with organizations like the Houston Food Bank, Trees for Houston, and Dress for Success. Through the 2018 Humankind campaign, Chevron employees volunteered more than 15,000 hours. In all of 2018, our employees contributed more than 40,000 volunteer hours, yes. benefiting nearly 600 local charities. Between 2015 and 2018, Chevron invested over $37 million with local Houston nonprofits focused on health, education, and economic development. We believe that volunteering our own human energy demonstrates the commitment of our workforce to the community in which we live and work. Chevron's employees gladly devote their time and talents to make a difference, enabling a brighter future for Houston. Chevron is proud to be part of our community's can-do spirit. And along with that community spirit feeling that a lot of people are out experiencing today, we also have people that are trying to qualify for the Olympics and have done so. Uh, Adriana Pertia Nelson is going to run under the 207A standard to make the Olympic trials for the U.S. We had a whole bunch of women and a whole bunch of guys make it under the, the half marathon standard, which is 73 for the women and 64 for the guys. And I didn't see the numbers, but it's liter literally going to be dozens. There dozens she is. We're just it. showing her there. Today, the last day to qualify yeah. for her, right? She, she's a UTEP graduate. I remember watching her run years ago for them and was outstanding on the track and just converted it over to uh, the marathon for today. She's not a youngster. I think, I think she's 38, 39 years old. That's a youngster. So that's a <laughs> <laughs> youngster. For the, compared to us, yes. Yes. <laughs> Let's hear from the women's winner. She's with Bob Slovak. Bob? All right, thank you, Tom. Uh, we're here with Ethiopia's Ascali Marachi. She wins the, Shell, the Chevron Houston Marathon. First time running here in Houston. Her third overall win, uh, marathon win. How was the race? Uh, first of all, I want to ask you, she pulled away from the pack. What was that like? She said, I started early. I didn't wait for anybody. I went ahead early. Got ahead early and, and really and ran, ran her race, ran, ran a personal best. How, was, how did that feel for her? 
I want to congratulate you on behalf of our 45,000 Chevron employees worldwide on a great victory. Congratulations. You're, you're winning Cowboy Act. <laughs> you, have to, you have to put it on. <laughs> and there you have it. Your women's marathon winner. Congratulations. <laughs> Such a great shot. Yeah, Congratulations <laughs> to her. Now, here's the man who hands out the checks. <laughs> Steve Green is with us. He's the president of Chevron North America Exploration Production. By the way, welcome back home. You've been away from Houston for a while, but you said you're glad to be back. We are terrific. We are thrilled to be back. Uh, my wife and I have been away for about 16 years working in different Chevron operations around the world, but uh, Houston's home, and uh, you know, what a remarkable event to showcase the city and all that it has going for it. I, you know, it's one of the best kept secrets in the world. I was going to say, why does Chevron keep sponsoring this event? What does it mean to your Well, you know, the, the Houston Marathon for more than 40 years has benefited the communities, nonprofit partners in the communities, and this is our 15th year of sponsoring it. It's a, it's a chance for us to involve our employees. We have more than 300 employees volunteering today in all aspects of race preparation and conducting the race. We have over 300 Chevron runners in the different events and whatever, including one also attempting to qualify for the Olympic oh, really? as Wonderful. well. One Exciting. of our California employees. Okay. And so it, it is almost at any level you want to get involved, it is, it is an opportunity to get involved. And that's one of our core values as a company. We believe there's a strong link between healthy business environments mm -hmm. and healthy communities. And we've seen that here in Houston uh, and anywhere around the world we work. So uh, we are very, very proud to partner with our nonprofits, the city of Houston, our media partners, everyone who pitches in to make this a terrific showcase event for the city. And at many of your facilities, you have health clubs and wellness programs and all of that in place for your employees. We do. Uh, obviously, one of the values we promote is a healthy workforce, healthy citizens, healthy communities. Uh, here in Houston, we have a fabulous health facility in our uh, downtown tower. But almost every facility around the world either has on-premises facilities or we have arrangements with third-party providers uh, because we, you know, keeping our employees healthy is vital to our business success. Yeah, and the oil business and, and international business, obviously, and this is really an international event. It, it really is. <laughs> uh, I, uh, you know, uh, my staff told me there uh, every state in the union is represented. Right. More uh -huh. than 52 countries yep. represented. Uh, you know, over 33,000 runners, 7,000 volunteers. Uh, it is it is an international event, and you know what a beautiful day to oh, showcase the city. It is. And you said you're not a runner, but does this inspire you to be one? Well, I tell you, I uh, couldn't be more impressed with the dedication of all the athletes that participated in any of the events. Uh, the dedication to train and prepare and uh, the me both mentally and physically to put yourself I don't think you answered that. the question. Does this no, I was thinking Steve is giving well, my I'm answer. I'm following my media no, training. I was, I was thinking, go ahead, you're going with my answer. I, I generally run when something's chasing me, so. Uh, <laughs> we can still appreciate the athletes, that's Tom. That's, that's exactly can, right. yeah. Someone yeah. needs to cheer them on. I, that's right. I, I, I sometimes run after my errant golf shots, so uh, I play poor. Poor golf with a passion. So. <laughs> so do I. So do I. Well, we're so happy to have you back 15th year in a row. We hope we make it many, many uh, more. We're looking yeah. forward to a long, long run. Uh, as I said, it, uh, this year we, we uh, participated in something new, Run for a Purpose. We conducted a competition, more than 65 nonprofit charities. 
and the three who came out on top, we donated 25000 each to uh, CanCare, a group that works yeah. with cancer with uh, patients. Uh, Park Houston Parkinson's uh, Disease Society, who helps people facing that the challenges of that terrible disease. And last but not least, Friends for Life, a group that focuses on animal rescue and finding homes for uh, deserving animals all across our community. So they're, they're all terrific partners. All 65 were very deserving, and we're very, very proud of the three that uh, earned the contributions this year. Uh, Steve Green, president of Chevron North America Production and Exploration, thank you. Good thank to you, see you, Tom. Thank you to Appreciate ABC it. and Channel 13. You do a great job of promoting the event. We're thank very, you. very happy to be partners. Welcome thank home. You. Thank you very much. We want to go out now uh, on the course to Ted Oberg. I believe, Ted, that you've moved from the River Oaks District, or are you still there? Memorial Park now between mile 21 and mile 22, Gina. These runners now on pace to finish right at uh, about three and a half, just under three and a half hours, uh, and they look great. If I could smile like this after 21 miles, I might do another Houston Marathon. Let me tell you one of the things here at Memorial Park. It, it's a bit of a trick on your mind because you can start to see the skyscrapers of downtown, and you can have that view all the way in, all the way down Memorial, all the way down Allen Parkway, and yet it is so far away at this point. Five miles might not seem a whole lot uh, a distance if you're running 26, but these people have already run 21, and it is a long way in from here. Th this is a great group. You talk about commitment. These are runners who are incredibly committed uh, to their training to be able to finish this marathon at three and a half hours. You know, we saw the finishers come through here just about a, well, I don't know, you guys know better, probably uh, 45 minutes uh, or an hour ago, uh, and, and they looked incredible but this group is running really well as well. The, uh, the finishers all talked about the wind, but here in the park, guys, not much wind at all. Also, not too many spectators. If you are at home and want to get a chance to see people running the Houston Marathon, this is a great spot to come out. Uh, and you've got probably another hour or so if you want to come down and see it and be a part of race day this morning. Uh, good morning. How you feeling? I'm so great. Look at that. What a great smile. So great, she said. Go ahead, Gina. What's your question? Courtney Fisher is on the course as well. So happy to be out here. And Courtney, I would imagine you are as well. Yes, Tim, we're just a little bit before you. So we're at mile 17, and we are seeing all of these runners talking. I'm sorry. I was just having a hard time here. We are seeing all these runners, like you said, with smiles, which is so incredible. I cannot believe the energy everyone has. One of those people stopped to talk with us. You heard from him at the start of your marathon. Chaz, how are you feeling? I feel Mile 17. I feel pretty good. I wish you wouldn't have told me that. <laughs> I know. But I feel pretty good. I might be the worst colleague and friend because I think when you came up to me, I said, you still have nine more miles to you, go. You did, and I already knew, so thank you. Ah, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. But you're doing good. You said you've never been felt better training, right? Yeah, it feels good. Like, I don't know what it was this year. The last few years, it was kind of a chore. But, like, this year, my training's felt good, and thankfully, it's translated to today. And so. raising a huge amount of money for cystic fibrosis yeah. which is the big thing if right you go to my uh, if you go to my social media at chaz abc 13 you can find out more about cystic fibrosis and my fundraiser and all that good stuff awesome so. okay we're not going to keep you nine I'm more gonna, miles i'm going to tell oh. my grandfather happy birthday real quick he got me into running so happy birthday papa awesome. i'll see you all tonight all right good good luck see you chaz awesome so exciting to see all these runners hear from them again mile 17 we're right before ted and they are passing us yes thumbs up i'm loving this good job guys We'll send it back to you in the studio for now. Happy birthday, Chaz's grandfather. Papa. 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 Happy birthday, <laughs> Gina Gaston. Hers was earlier this week. And so. yours was as well. Happy I, birthday, we're, TK. We're, we're a day apart. And <laughs> here we have more of the finishers. I, I assume this is mostly the half marathon and finishers, John. On the mass, on the yeah. busy side. The other side is the obviously the marathon. And while, while we're doing the Chevron interview, mm -hmm. 20 women finished under the Olympic trials qualifying standard. 20 Terrific. women. Just watching them roll through. Wow. I, I mentioned earlier that athlete development program mm -hmm. where they kind of, that's who, 19 of them were that with that program. They had no name on it. And then Neely Gracie uh, Spence also qualified. She's coming back from a three-year layoff. And it was a big deal for her to make that after having a, a child. So yeah. these, and these, and this is the hard, talking about the joy of finishing. This is the hard part now. There's been two women that finished in the 245s but you have to run 245.00 to make it or oh. better. Yeah, so maybe there's a help with the chip time, but but I don't think so. 
It was a phenomenal run by a lot of people. This, I don't know, so I don't know how many made it, but it was a lot. Wow. I mean, 20 <laughs> that we saw in that short amount of time. Very exciting day for so many runners here, and, and as always, um, people doing at least personal best. A lot of people at least do personal best here if they don't set, yeah. set records all together. Right. As we said, 186,000 people since the marathon started here in 1972 have finished the marathon, and then, of course, the half marathon, the Ramco half marathon started 18 years ago. We've had 156,000. And every year, you know, about 27,000 or so people enter in both races and about 80% finish. So it's a pretty good finishing rate as we talked about earlier, John. Right. And a lot of those, a lot of the marathoners actually, you're allowed to shift to the half. So you sign up way in advance. I think there'll probably be a window that opens today to sign up for next there year. There is. Yeah, there is. And yeah. Then, there then is. there'll be we'll one of the stuff. About that. So you have this, this excitement of signing up and you go, I'm going to go with the marathon. And then your training don't, might not go quite as well as you'd hope, and there's a window where you can shift into the, to the half marathon, okay. and that happens quite a bit. So in the end, you'll see those numbers skew a little bit from 11,000 and 11,000. Well, you'll end up seeing like 12 or 13,000 half marathon finishers and six or 7,000 marathon finishers. Let me ask you, uh, I hosted the press conference on Friday, talked to both Molly Huddle and Sarah Hall. Do you know how either of them did today, the two Americans? I, I, I did not see them finish okay. today. But they, they, they've... Um, you know, Molly Huddle's won 67.25 here. She set the American record at this race. And, and I, I didn't, and you've kind of got a weird mix here. You've got a combination of, of these American athletes, US athletes, they're doing this as the last prep for the trials. Mm -hmm. So, th and this is six weeks out. So six weeks out could either, depending on how the training goes, but it's scheduled a great down week right here and really crank one out. Yeah. Or it could be your heaviest mileage in, in your in your hardest intensity, so you're doing this as a workout. So I think we had a combination of those things going today. Different. There were a, obviously a lot of the women trying to hit that 73 minute mark, and they did. Yeah, yeah they really cranked training well. goals for every yeah. athlete. Becky Wade's a good example. It sounds like she PR'd by over two minutes. So we're found her training worked out a little bit better for her. Hopefully that translates into something very positive in six mm -hmm. weeks. And there were a couple of the elite runners like Molly Huddle who are new moms, running within a year of the birth of their children. I, I, I like to say I think that's amazing, but, <laughs> I, <laughs> but, but I can't really speak on it. I think yeah, it is incredible. <laughs> and that was a story with with Neely uh, Gracie uh, Spence. Is she had a child and, and was right was really in the 16, 17 was really good. Didn't run an 18 or 19, and I was back in her in her first trial or first attempt. She made the trials. Even if you can't speak from personal experience, you know, several years ago, people didn't, women didn't do that. People didn't yeah. think they could. Didn't yes. think they could bounce back like that. And the certainly, the um, uh, it's ha and it's happening on the track as well. People are coming back and winning medals and the yeah. whole bit. It's a given. That, I mean, the, the, the difference now between many years ago is for men and women, you can you can actually compete for so long because you can make a living at it. Mm -hmm. You can make a good living at it, in Molly Huddle's case. So, what, But you're also at the same age, you know, you're 28, 29, 30. You don't want to wait till you're 40 or 45, 50 to have kids. So there's that, there's that balance of how do you get that, mm -hmm. do, the, do your life and have do your, your career. career. And have your yeah. children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well we're going to go to Pooja Lodi, who is still at the split. That is mile eight. We still have people coming by there, Pooja. You know, we really... Here's how you can tell just how motivated these runners are. Just over the past 10 minutes or so, officials out here did close off the area for those who are still trying to do the full marathon. So we are at the split. You can see all of these people to my right are still working on this half marathon. But what is really incredible is that many of them won't make it in the time that they need to make it by. But of course, they are still going. Did you hear him? He said, I'm only doing this to beat my dad. Again, we're seeing a whole lot of motivation, a whole lot of really great attitudes out here from some runners who are just trying to make it as far as they can go. But let's head on over to David Nuno right now to see how he's doing. Hey, Pooja, I'm here at mile 15, and we're getting two types of runners today, uh, at least at this area. We've got those runners that are just dominating, can't wait to get to the finish. And then we got those that go, oh, my gosh, I realize I am running a marathon. I'm at mile 15, and I still have 10, excuse me, 11 more miles to go. So we've had a little bit of that out here, a lot of smiles and a lot of stretching going on out here. I think this is the point where it really starts getting real. Anytime you sign up for a marathon, obviously, it's going to get real. But still a lot of excitement a lot of thumbs up here at this area they know that they're not quite just there yet but when they get to courtney fisher who's coming up next they know they still got a little more to go courtney 
it doesn't feel real. Mileage, Mike, mile marker 15, David. It sure does at 17. These runners, they are still smiling. They are still happy. They are feeling it today, this gorgeous day. And guys, at mile marker 17, I'm not sure, but I think we have the biggest cheering section for Marvin. Marvin is a lucky guy. He is just killing it today. They are waiting, family, friends, young and old. Mile marker 17 is where it's at, guys. But I know Ted is seeing just as many smiles up the road at mile marker 21, Ted. 21, the smiles start to fade a little bit. At least they did when I was running it here. Although I'll tell you, when I hit my 21st mile, I got through with a little help from a friend called Fear. It was certainly brought a smile. I'd realized uh, that there was an awful lot to celebrate on this course for an awful lot of these runners who are just five miles away from ending their 2020 Chevron Houston Marathon. It is a great experience for them. And even if they don't want to have the beer, it is something for all of the rest of us to celebrate because the finish line just five miles away and that's where my friend Bob Slovak is. Bob? All right, thank you, Ted. I'm here with race director Brand Koch. Uh, him and his staff do such a great job. Just your perspective of this race. The weather seemed like it worked out perfectly. The runners are all into it. You know, it, it's funny because whenever we have a really bad weather year, I get blamed for it. <laughs> People were starting to thank me yesterday because they knew that that front was coming. And, uh, you know, I, I've always said it's not my fault, and it's really not my, you know, it's not my fault either way, but um, I guess if I have to take the blame some years, I'll take the credit the other years. We'll give it to you this year because everything seemed to work out. The elite runners really put on a show. Boy, I'll tell you what, uh, 59 for the men, a uh, 106 for the, for the women in the half marathon, then a uh, 223. Uh, 208, you know, 223 for the women, 208 for the men. Uh, outstanding times. And, and, and a, a couple of the runners running for the first time here in Houston, they win the marathon. Uh, so they, they love Houston. They, we know they'll be back. R word spreads, doesn't it, amongst the elite runners about this race? Yes, it does. And and one thing that's making it that's making it even easier for us to recruit good runners, we finally got the World Athletics Gold Label for a race for our marathon it's a uh, it's a sign of a really good field and the and uh, the top five the top five finishers at our race are automatically qualified for olympic games not now they still have to they still have to get the uh they still have to get their chosen by their country but they automatically get the time that they need to actually go to the games or to the world championships. And I know a lot of runners had an uh, opportunity to, to qualify for the Olympic trials, so a lot of the runners yes. are really pushing it today. And yes, and you saw, you saw them finishing, un, you saw big groups of people finishing right under that yeah. necessary time, and that, that was great too. That was great to see. So for those who may be watching, who have never run, what do you tell them? What do you tell them about coming out? Um, you know, lace up those shoes. <laughs> Get out there in the streets. Come join us. Come join us. Come join us. All right. Thank you very much, you Brad. Go. Another you great bet. job. Another thank great job. Tom, thank Gina. All right, Bob. Well, for those of you at home thinking, you know what? Maybe I can do this. Maybe. It's not too early to no. lace up those shoes. January 29th is going to be the marathon next year. And at 4 o'clock today, Early registration pricing opens up. Four o'clock today, we have information for you at abc13.com or chevronhoustonmarathon.com. So uh, now is the time. It is, it is. <laughs> and we hope you'll join us tonight at 1035 where we're going to have our show, the wrap-up show called The Finish Line. John Warren, Rice University track coach, will join me along with Callum Neff, the last man starting 1035 tonight. And we'll have so much about your friends, neighbors, and relatives and all the elites running today. By the way, thank you to this great crew here at ABC 13 for always making us look good and for making Absolutely. it easy here to put on this incredible event. John, some final thoughts from you today about what you saw on the course. I think our hopes were a little bit high to set records. Like we were hoping to get four records. Like I said earlier, the challenge is those records are all so good to hit them. You've got really got to crank. You saw how good the day was, especially in the half. 
the, the amount of men that were under 60 minutes, the amount of women that qualified for the trials in 73 minutes, uh, the depth of, of, of success today was, was probably unprecedented even in this in this great race. And a lot of people qualified for the Olympics, which is great for them. Absolutely. Melinda Elmore, I just noticed, hey, she qualified twice in the Olympics. She got the standard for Canada, the, the, the Olympic standard, and she was uh, third place, so she gets in automatically as well. And well, we hope for another great race next year as well. I mean, as, as Bob said, maybe some of the yeah. runners, elites will be coming back and the word spreads. That gold label status is, 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 again, a complicated international thing to explain. It has a huge impact on this race for a lot of reasons, but it's going to bring back stronger and stronger fields. And I did notice today a lot of winners who said this was their first time running in this Chevron Houston Marathon. If we can guarantee this weather, th <laughs> it'll, it'll <laughs> grow uh, exponentially. Yeah, if well you if can we guarantee this weather, a whole bunch of things will happen. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> <laughs> if we had had the weather we had yesterday in 70 and humid, it would have been yeah. an ugly race. Yes. That's right. Well, John, thank you. We couldn't do it with you every year. John it was Warren, wonderful. Thank Rice you. University track coach and the guy who always adds so much to this broadcast. Yeah. Thank you. It really is special not just to see the elite people come out and run, but to see so many of our friends, so many of our neighbors get a chance to train all year long alongside their friends and then get a chance to run alongside the best in the world. And, and maybe they're not the best runner ever, but they are able to finish, and they're Absolutely. able to feel proud about their own personal accomplishment. Absolutely. And that's our show for today for John Warren and Thank my you. colleague, Gina Gaston, whom I always love working with. Oh, and Tom, all of us. go on. <laughs> well, she is so, anyway. <laughs> time for us to go, Gina. For everybody here at ABC 13, thank you for joining us this morning. Lace up those shoes and get out there and run. We're so glad you're watching us here in the Houston area. We'd like to invite you to come out and visit Lakewood. You'll love the services in person. It's inspiring and uplifting. There are so many friendly people. Bring your whole family. We have great children's facilities. You'll feel right at home. The Sunday service starts at 11. We hope to see you soon. For more information about visiting Lakewood Church, visit us online at lakewoodchurch.com. Last year, Shen Yun sold out theaters everywhere. Don't miss your chance to experience the magic. Shen Yun, coming to Worthington.